Greetings, fellow detectives. Good morning. Welcome to our stream of The Haunting of Castle Malloy, the 19th mystery in the Nancy Drew series. A nice spooky mystery in Ireland. Make sure I got everything set up here. We've got the chat. We've got the game. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. Happy Mother's Day to any mothers out there or anyone celebrating their mother. All right, Haunting of Castle Malloy. What do we got? We've got our Mayan statue from Scarlet Hand. We have a lovely Carnivale mask, mask, a mask from Venice, <laughs> a mask from Venice. We have the um, pyramid from White Wolf of Icicle Creek. So apparently Nancy just stole this precious pyramid. Good for you, Nancy. Um, we've got our little hula doll from, I mean, it makes a more prominent appearance in legend of the crystal skull but it's definitely also in creature of kapu cave lovely light that's just so much fun to turn on and off no idea why and our case file when kyler mallory called me from her home in london and asked me to be your maid of honor i was a little reluctant after all i hadn't seen her since she stayed with us as an exchange student a couple of years ago but when she told me the wedding is going to take place at an old family castle in Ireland, <laughs> how could I say no? The wedding will be very small, but Kyler still needs help with all the final preparations, which means she'd like me to arrive several days early. So I'm going to fly to Dublin, rent a car, and meet Kyler at Castle Malloy. She warned me that the place is somewhat in need of repairs, whatever that means. And unfortunately, by the time I get there, it'll be night. But I've never been to Ireland before. And I've never even seen a real honest-to-goodness castle, let alone stayed in one. So the fact that it may be dark and run down just makes it more of an adventure. And you know me, whenever the question is, who wants to go on an adventure? My answer is always, I do. Ha <laughs> ha punny, Nancy. I do. Greetings, Golden Moon. Welcome. Greetings, Ray Marie. Greetings, Yokosei the Hedgehog. Greetings, Grace. Love this game. This one's so fun. Almost don't remember this game. I haven't played it for so long. This one has some fun little twists, so it, it would be a fun one to actually forget. Can't believe I got here before you started the stream. Look at you go, Ray Marie. All right, we have a invitation for Kyler and um, Matt's wedding. Kyler Teagan Mallory of London and Matthew William Simmons of London request your presence to witness their exchange of matrimonial vows on the 1st of June at 1 o'clock. Location is Castle Malloy, Baylor, Ireland. Okay, so they make a huge plot point out of um, Matt being like blind without his glasses, and yet in the wedding invite, where are his glasses? Does he wear contacts? And if so, why wouldn't he have them with him in Ireland? Plot hole. You're in a car going to pick up Mother's Day lunch from Olive Garden. That's awesome, Jessica. Love the Olive Garden. What are you getting? There's so many good things. Got our phone card. We're going to do Senior Detective, but I'm going to cheat a little bit because I have solutions to some of the puzzles down already. You're not driving? Yeah, I assumed, Jessica. <laughs> So hopefully you guys don't mind that I'm going to cheat a little bit on this one because there's so many puzzles. This is such a puzzle-heavy game. Hey, flying! That used to be a thing. So your plane was on time, your luggage arrived, your rental car was waiting, everything went without a hitch? Yep, and according to Kyler's directions, I'm within two kilometers of Castle Malloy. Now stop worrying about me and get over to the Dunhills. What time is it there? Around two. The party just started. It's gonna go all day, so I've got plenty of time. Are you driving? Yes, Ned, I'm talking on my cell phone while I'm driving, but it's okay. There's absolutely no traffic. And I think I see the gates. I gotta go. Say hi to the Dunhills for me, and have fun. Without you? Yeah, right. Take care, Nancy. <laughs> Whoa! 
<laughs> Banshee. What was that? Oh, I remember playing this game for the first time and being so freaked out, like not wanting to walk anywhere. Oh, you're a bit sad because you tried playing this the other day and the discs don't like your laptop. I'm sorry, Yoko. Say that's super frustrating. Ooh, chicken parm, Jessica. Yum. And when you tried to buy it on Steam, your computer thought the EX file was malware and deleted it? Oh no. That's frustrating. Nancy's talking on her phone while driving. For shame. And that's, you know, this is what happens when you talk on your phone while driving. You run into a banshee. That's just what happens. So it's an important lesson. Okay, creepy little doll. I love this part. This sheep. Yes, be my friend. <laughs> I love that sheep so much. Okay, slider puzzle, but we're missing the last piece, so we're not going to do that just yet. Another piece. Beautiful flowers. Love it. Very cool archway onto the grounds. We love that. Driving without hands. Good job, Nance. Um, we can look at this sign. Oh! Oh, this brings us to the inn. I didn't want to do that. Don't do that, Nancy. She was also speeding. Nancy, this is not safe behavior. These grounds have to be so pretty. Like, I can't even imagine how gorgeous these grounds must be. Sheep alert! Oh, I, um, um, hello, I'm Nancy Drew. I'm here for the wedding. The wedding's been called off, so go on back to where you come from. No, wait, please, my car's in the ditch by the gate. I can't go anywhere. Walk down the road to the inn, then. Give me your keys, and I'll see to your car in the morning. I left the keys in the car. Can I at least talk to Kyler? She's sleeping. No, wait, I came all the way from the States. You cannot stay here. Go to the inn, I said. Now off with you. Please, can I come in just for a minute? Hello? Are you there? Hello? Denal. <laughs> I love Denal. <laughs> He's so cranky. There's somebody up there. I bet it's Kyler. You're frustrated because you sent an important email to a professor about a project you're supposed to do, asking if you could present it on Monday, and you haven't gotten a response yet. The professor hates me. That's so frustrating, Jessica. I'm so sorry. Let's throw a giant rock through her window. <laughs> we just gotta get the right aim. Oh, I'm probably gonna aim it wrong. Oh, almost had it. Clink. Aw, now I'm not going to get to throw a giant one through a window. Oops. I had to do it the right way. Greetings, my history girl. Greetings, Sarah. What the heck is that voice? Let me in. Deaf, are you now? I told you, you cannot be staying here. Girl, what are you doing? That's Nancy Drew, my maid of honor. Let her in. Matt's disappeared? How can somebody you came all the way out here with to marry just disappear? He hasn't disappeared for good. You have to understand, Matt's a bit of a prankster, and the wedding is still days away. Right, Ray Marie? He disappeared as a prank? He adores getting people in a tizzy. I do think he's pushing the envelope this time, but... He'll show up. Mind you, it may not be till I've started down the aisle, but he'll show, saying he just wanted to make this a wedding no one shall ever forget. So you're here by yourself now? Actually, Matt's best friend Kit Foley is here too. He set up a cot in the Great Hall downstairs. Is he from London too? He lives in London now, yes, but both his parents are Irish. You could practically hear Donal's ears perk up when he heard that. That's the man you met at the door, Donal Delaney, the caretaker. Not Donald, mind you. There's no D at the end, so it's pronounced Donal. That's the way you're supposed to spell it. Which is to say, that's the way the Irish spell it. Proud of his heritage, huh? Indeed. 
which would be tolerable if his love for the Irish wasn't accompanied by an abiding distaste for the British. Now, he rather likes me, but that's only because he considers me to be Irish, since I'm directly related to the man who used to own this place. When it comes to my British fiancé, Donal detests him, which is why he was so quick to tell you the wedding's off. He wants it to be off. He came right out and said, if I am to be married in Castle Malloy, it simply must be to an Irishman. Said my marrying a Brit would upset the fairy people, or whatever he calls them. Ah, yes, the fairy people. You sure the wedding shouldn't at least be postponed? I'm telling you, he'll show. You see, sometimes I hear him. You know, his voice. It's very faint and muffled, but it sounds like he's calling to me, saying things I can't quite make out, teasing me the lout. So I know he's somewhere close by. He'll be here for the wedding. I'd stake my life on it. Of course, I remember well your penchant for solving mysteries. So if you want to give this one a go, by all means do. You could start in the nursery. It's down the hall. That's where Matt had set up his cot and was spending most of his time. Find him, Nancy. Having my maid of honor ruin this silly vanishing trick of his would teach him a lesson he sorely needs. Someone ran out in front of my car on my way here and caused me to drive into a ditch. Are you all right? Me, I'm fine. My car and my cell phone, uh, not so good. And I'm pretty sure whomever I saw dropped this. Looks like some kind of homemade doll. The clothes. It looks like Matt. And that's his ring. What did the person who dropped this look like? I didn't really get a good look. It was dark and I was distracted and it moved so fast. Frankly, I'm not even sure if what I saw was a person. Denal, the caretaker. When we realized Matt was gone, straight away Denal claimed Matt had been kidnapped by fairies. Which is, of course, utterly ridiculous. It was probably Matt himself you saw, tricked out in some costume and leaving that doll behind just to confound us. Well, I do hope he's enjoying himself, because as soon as we're married, that will be that. No more practical jokes. Ever. Jessica, that sounds super annoying, especially since it's your graduation year. I'm so sorry. I hope the professor gets back to you soon, because that sounds very frustrating. Where does Mr. Delaney live? All I know is he comes at dawn and leaves at sunset. I can't fathom what he does all day, but he always seems to be puttering away at something. When he's not working, he spends most of his time down the road at the Screaming Banshee Inn. Oh, you're a junior. But you're about to graduate, though? Are you graduating a year early? Who pays him? My grandfather's estate. Apparently, Grandpapa considered Donal to be as much a part of Castle Malloy as those moldy old tapestries you see everywhere. I should let him go. All he ever talks about are banshees and fairies and leprechauns. And he can be quite obstinate, as you saw at the door. But if Grandpapa saw fit to put up with him all those years, I suppose I can too. Oops. Let me get some notifications out of my way here. When you said you sometimes hear Matt, where are you when that happens? In here? In here. In the nursery, sometimes outside. His voice is always very muffled, and very, very faint, so I can never tell where it's coming from or, or what he's saying. But it's Matt, I'm sure of it. And you've looked all over for him? When it became apparent he was missing, we searched everywhere, for hours. <laughs> we were afraid he'd gone wading and drowned or something, or wandered into the bog, or gotten lost out on the moor. But we found no footprints, no clothes lying around, nothing. So when I heard his voice, it dawned on me he was playing one of his outlandish pranks. <laughs> I was furious with him, but truth be told, it was also a bit of a relief. What are you doing in here, if you don't mind my asking? Reading. About myself, in a way. You see, until my grandpapa died and left me this place, not only did I have no idea that this castle existed, but I had no idea my real name was not Mallory, but Malloy. Apparently, Grandpapa changed his name 50 years ago, so no one would find out he was Irish. Why didn't he want people to find out he was Irish? I think it had something to do with his brother, Brendan, the man who owned this place and was living here when it exploded during World War II. 
He was rumored to have been a double agent, supposedly doing top secret research for the Allies, but in truth passing his findings onto the Axis. Not exactly a brother you want people to know about. If the rumors were true. Anyway, ever since I found out I'm a Malloy, I can't stop reading about Ireland. So many different people have populated this country at one time or another. The Celts, the Druids, the Gaels. It's all quite fascinating. Have you come across anything in here that indicates whose side your great-uncle was really on? No, <laughs> and if he was half as smart as he was reputed to be, I highly doubt I ever shall. He was quite the inventor, I do know that. Everything that remains in this place seems as if it's been tinkered with. Even his daughter's dollhouse, of all things. I'm gonna go play detective now. The five months I spent living with you, your dad, and Hannah. And Togo, of course. That was a very happy time for me, Nancy. I can't tell you how thrilled I am you're here. I get to see you again, and I get to see Ireland? <laughs> I'm the one who's thrilled, believe me. Let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. I'm your maid of honor, remember? I haven't forgotten. She's reading Marie Antoinette's journal from Treasure in the Royal Tower as well. Oh, I see, Jessica. I got it. Okay. English education. That's really cool. That's what Mr. Wizard Kitten does. I was, that's still super frustrating, though. I hope he, the professor gets back to you soon. Remember to call your mummies today for Mother's Day. You almost forgot. Oh, no. Yes, exactly. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers in chat and anyone celebrating with their moms. We're doing Zoom chats with our with my mom and then Mr. Wizard Kitten's mom this afternoon. I notice they never say Nazi. Yes, they're very, um, they say allies and they say access, but they don't say anything more specific than that. Okay, we don't have all the gears we need for this puzzle, so we can't do that yet. Greetings, Forever Insane. If I heard this gal saying all these things, I'd say that she'd lost it. I'm hearing the voices. Cuckoo. <laughs> Whoa, that would have been quite a fall. Yeah, it would have. That's kind of a door to nowhere if I ever saw one. Ooh, a Tower of Hanoi. I love these things. Okay. These I know how to solve. Don't need a spoiler for this one. You're a teacher, and it's so irresponsible not to reply to your students. Mm-hmm. I wonder if the prof has a policy of not responding on weekends. Some people do that. Yeah, some people do that just because of contracts. Um, because teachers often work more than their contractual hours. But if it's little things like that, I mean, I feel like that's... I mean, it's not a little thing, but it would be easy to respond to. Mother's Day in the UK is in March. Really? Oh wow, that's so cool. I didn't realize that in different parts of the world it would be on different days. I learned something new today. <laughs> Oops. I hope she doesn't yell at me for emailing her on Mother's Day. It's not my fault they didn't answer earlier. Yeah, it's totally fine to send the email. Regardless of the day. That could be why she's not responding, I suppose. But yeah, when you only have one thing left to do, it would feel a lot like, come on, just let me get this one thing done. What's the difference between a Zoom chat and a Skype? You know, that's a good question. I really don't think there's much of a difference. I have now tried, just because I've been doing distance learning with my students, all of the um, video apps. And honestly, the one with the best quality is Facebook messaging. I obviously can't use that with my students. But for like calling family and friends, the Facebook messaging has the best quality. And then I would say, like, for professional things, Zoom has the next best quality. I think Skype is more informal, which is why it's not being recommended necessarily for business purposes. Oh, and you sent the email on Friday. Yeah. That's plenty of time, then. Greetings, Nadia. Wish this game went into a bit more detail about the history of the relationship between England and Ireland. That would be so cool. 
I am obsessed with UK history. It just seems so interesting, especially since that's where a lot of my heritage is from. Like, go, I go way back to um, England and Scotland. Or my family's heritage does. You love the UK? Which part do you live in? Yeah, my history girl. Which part do you live in? That's where, um, the UK is where Mr. Wizard Kitten and I want to go for our honeymoon. What am I doing here? I'm trying to get this big piece. So if you have any recommendations about smaller areas in the UK that are good to visit that wouldn't be super overwhelmed with tourists, I would love to hear those too. This one maybe, and then this one, this and this. Okay, here we go. Now we're making some progress. One question about how people are glassing over Zoom's leaks recently. Yeah, there has been a few like security or potential security issues with Zoom. My district personally hasn't had any issues with it, but I know some people have, which is concerning. You're from Scotland, just outside of Glasgow. Oh my gosh. What was the Silent Spy like as a game for you then? Did it do... Scotland justice. Okay, wait a minute. I need this to go over here. I love the noise of the stone and the fire crackling in the background. It's so soothing. <laughs> anyway, you're stressing. I'm sorry, Jessica. That does sound super stressful. I hope it resolves itself soon. But hopefully in the meantime, you can enjoy your delicious olive garden. How is teaching going for you over Zoom, Caitlin? It's been pretty rough for me to transition to teach online, but I can imagine trying to do speech pathology over Zoom would be even more difficult. Yeah, it's um, what I've been doing is a lot of providing lessons for students, and then they record themselves completing the lessons, and then I send them back feedback. And when I provide them the lessons, I'm like, okay, remember, we're practicing your R sound. Here's how you make your R sound. Here's what you need to do. And a lot of my students have been doing really well with it. And then there's quite a few students, well, not quite a few. I'd say I have a handful of students who haven't been able to do any assignments at all. And a lot of that is just access difficulties, unfortunately. But the recording part works, works for the most part. Like, that's not too bad. Yeah, Scotland sounds so cool. I agree, Nadia. The soundtrack for this game is one of my favorites. It's so good. Okay, what else do we got? We need two more of these before we can do this puzzle. Brass and copper. Oh my gosh, same, Raymarie. The college stress is so real. Like, I think a lot of adults who haven't been in college for a while kind of underestimate how rough college can be. They're like, oh, you have your, you don't even, if you don't even have a morning class, you can just sleep in whenever you want, and you have so much free time. Ah! What are you doing, Raven? Put that down. You do like Silence by the only thing that bothers me is Nancy keeps pronouncing Loch Lomond wrong. How are you actually supposed to pronounce it? Because I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, too. Us Americans say Loch Lomond. But that's probably not how you actually say it, <laughs> if I had to guess. Okay, Matt's glasses. That's probably problematic um, that we found his broken glasses. This room is so creepy. Creepy little rocking horse. Oh, look, we got money. We have one cent. Creepy little dollhouse. You got the food. You're on your way home. Excellent. That's so good. Pig, cow, 
Man, woman, cat. Do we have everything we need for this one? I think we can do the first one. Okay, so the man directly next to or directly above. The cat needs to be directly next to a knight and directly above the man. And then the woman needs to be somewhere to the left of a knight. The cow needs to be directly above the pig. And the pig needs to be directly next to the... that. Yay! We did it! Hated recording your voice for presentations because you don't like how your voice sounds. I sound like I'm five. It's so hard getting used to how your voice sounds on recording. We're so used to hearing our voice resonating um, through the bones in our skull. Um, this was in Jane's room. Le Lapin Blue. Truth speaks even though the tongue... Weak, dead? What? Truth speaks even though the tongue... Weak, dead. <laughs> I'm confused. That doesn't make sense. But yeah, we're so used to hearing our voices resonating um, through the bones in our skull that we don't under we don't realize how it sounds until we we can't hear that resonation. It's so weird. It takes so much getting used to. See not what you see and hear not what you hear. Evil returns to the evil doer. This is a very unsettling room. Why would why would you willingly choose to sleep in here? Would anyone willingly choose to sleep in here? A silent mouth is sweet to hear. And then we have some of the toys from Secret of the Old Clock and this otter box, which I have the solution for. <laughs> Cuz again, this game has a lot of puzzles and if I tried to solve all of them real time, I think we'd be here for like 6 hours. So, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to do a little bit of a cheatsy cheats. <laughs> okay. Move number three to the number four spot. Turn tile four to complete central blue otter. I did pronounce it correctly? Oh, yay. Nancy pronounces it differently. Nancy, come on. Go to Scotland for your honeymoon, the Isle of Skye. Get a National Trust for Scotland membership and go to all the castles and sites. That sounds so good. I love castles. Crovey is a beautiful village on the sea, like 20 houses on the coast. Super isolated and so beautiful. That sounds insanely amazing. Love that. Online college takes so much discipline. It's a lot like distance learning for sure. Even though the tongue were dead, maybe? Right, Sarah? I could never sleep here. <laughs> Greetings, little gar literal garbage. Welcome to the stream. Glad you caught it. Hate doing presentations in general. You got terrible stage fright. Mm-hmm. I do competitive public speaking. Like, that's what I coach. Um, so it's something that I've been doing my whole life. But even still, I can feel that anxiety. Like, public speaking is rough. Terrible weather, though. Lots of rain. I bet. That's, I've definitely heard that. Move number one to the number six place. Complete the central green otter. Number seven to the number eight place. Turn the tile to complete the central brown otter. Move number one to the number two place. Turn tile two to complete the central purple otter. Move number one to the number seven place. Turn tiles one and seven to complete side otters. Okay. Turn tile three to complete the side otters. There we go. Okay. Gosh, that was so much easier. <laughs> Usually that puzzle takes me a long time to solve. I, I get there, but I don't know if you guys want to be here for 40 minutes while I solve the otter puzzle. <laughs> Rain is your favorite weather. I love rain. It rained yesterday. It was wonderful. I want a good thunderstorm. We haven't had a good thunderstorm yet this year. It barely rains where you live, so it's either sunny or snowing. I don't think I can jump that far. Greetings, by the way, bookworm. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> <laughs> the bad news. You were too badly injured in the fall to be Kyler's maid of honor. The good news, the dress she had wanted you to wear looked awful and itched like crazy. Ooh, shade. 
OMG, competitive public speaking. That's so cool. Trying to get better at it. Teaching has really helped. Mm-hmm. Yeah, teaching is literally public speaking all day long. It's a very cool activity. It's I did it in high school, too, and it helped prepare me a lot for just life in general. Hello, Kit. Hi, you must be Nancy Drew. I'm Kit Foley. Ignore the eye if you can. Walked into a door the other day. Looks worse than it feels. I'm a bit surprised you're still here, given the circumstances. I was going to say the same about you. I'm not about to leave Kyler here by herself. Until she comes to her senses, I'm staying put. What do you mean, comes to her senses? Matt isn't playing a practical joke, and he hasn't been kidnapped by fairies. He got cold feet and left. It's as simple as that. Are you sure? Well, Matt didn't come out and tell me he was leaving. But hey, I am his best friend. I know him better than anybody. I mean, he loves Kyler, but she can be a handful. And he's no pushover either. Their relationship is so tempestuous, it scares him. She thinks once he makes a real commitment, everything will be fine. But he's not so sure. So he bailed. Bye, Jessica. Enjoy your Olive Garden. Without saying anything to her? I'm sure he'll contact her in another day or two. In the meantime, she's in a raging state of denial, and I, for one, don't see any harm in allowing her to stay that way. I seriously doubt he walked out on her for good. It's just that for Matt, marriage is way too much, way too soon. How come you sound so American? Because I am American. My father's VP of International Sales for Krollmeister Incorporated. The company transferred him to London 15 years ago. I've pretty much lived there ever since. I just can't seem to pick up the accent. When or how did you realize that Matt had disappeared? Kyler and I went for a walk, came back, and the next thing I knew, Kyler was saying Matt was nowhere to be found. Where did you last see him? In the nursery. He always seemed to be in the nursery fiddling with things. Whenever I'd tease him about it, he'd always give me this impish little grin like he was up to something. When I checked the nursery and saw that Matt's suitcase and backpack were gone, it finally dawned on me that he had left and he wasn't coming back. Of course, by that time, Kyler had convinced herself that he was simply playing one of his practical jokes, and I couldn't bring myself to burst her bubble, so I didn't. It snowed where you are, Sarah? Oh no. It looks like you're drawing something. Are you an artist? Me? Not hardly. I'm with a real estate development company. These are just preliminary sketches for a couple of projects we're working on. In other words, I'm doing homework. Residential real estate or commercial? Mostly residential. And let me tell you, we'd have a field day with attractive land like the one this castle sits on. Ocean view, easy commute to Donegal, bedrock foundation, readily accessible groundwater. That bog's a bit problematic, but a little sand, a little gravel, a little landscaping, voila! A cluster of six, maybe eight luxury homes amid a park-like setting that would sell like lightning. I'll see you later, okay? Keep it real. You're a little sketchy, Kit. <laughs> yeah, the bad news, good news is so cool. Golden Moon, it is very similar to debate, I yeah. I just go snooping around, not with Kit right there. Lots in common with debate. A lot of um, our students that do debate also do um, what I do, competitive speech. Yeah, maybe don't leave that picture laying around, Kit. You're just adding to your um, your suspicion. The suspicious level. <laughs> From the Midwest, and usually right now it's thundering like crazy. I miss I it. I shouldn't go messing with this without permission. Exactly. Like, I miss a good thunderstorm here and, now, here and then. I love how positive Kit is being about the situation. Not so true. Okay, we needed that. This is good. Lots of wedding supplies. Ugh, it makes me think about how I need to do some work on planning my own wedding. <laughs> uh, we don't have enough money for Madame Isabelle, who is the cousin of the puppet from Final Scene, maybe. It's been raining where you live for the past couple of days. Lovely. Do you really believe that Kit... Or are you, oh, do you really believe that kit? Or are you just trying to map that onto her because you're still in love with her? I think that's it, Friday Lambda. Sun all the time definitely gets old. Even when we have a foot of snow outside, the sun will be out. Wow. 
Kit's American because her interactive wouldn't pay the money to hire an Irish actor. Exactly. You've got the one Irish actor in the Ireland game, but you can't have more than one character in each game that's actually from that country. That's the rules. <laughs> Fell out of the giant hole in the library after waking up groggily from a nap. Greetings, Afro Gamer Dude. I didn't fall in love with the characters in this one. The villain is cool, though. Yeah, the ending is definitely interesting, but I know what you mean. The characters aren't super memorable. Bad kid. No selling your friend's property. Played this game more times you can count and you've never seen that picture of Kit and Kyler. It's kind of hidden in the flames. That must be interesting to deal with. Yeah, totally. There was money next to the machine. Oh, I missed it. I'll have to grab that next time we're down there. Fancy, splendid timing. I just thought of something you can do for me. There's an old-fashioned printing press downstairs. Have you seen it? It's so big, it's pretty hard to miss. It came with the castle. My great-uncle Brendan had all sorts of gizmos and gadgets and machinery lying around. Anyway, when I saw the printer, I told Matt why not save some money and print the programs for the wedding right here. Uh, problem is, Matt failed to get them done before he turned into the merry prankster. And since I have the mechanical aptitude of a bacterium... <laughs> Would you mind finishing the job for me? You'd only have to print three more sheets. And the plate, the ink, the paper, everything you need is right there. No problem. Thank you, Nancy. You're the best. I had things to talk to you about. Did you print the rest of the programs? Not yet, but I will. Anything else to report? I found these glasses in the fireplace in the nursery. Those are mats. You found them in the fireplace. Did you look there when you were searching for mats? Of course not. Why would we look in the fireplace? Matt never, ever took his glasses off. Mostly because without them, he can't see two feet in front of him. Did he have an extra pair? It's possible. Any normal person with eyesight as bad as his would have had ten extra pairs. But how did those get broken? Oh, Nancy, maybe he truly is in trouble. Let me do some more looking around before we jump to any conclusions. The glasses could still just be part of an elaborate, practical joke. You're absolutely right. Please find him, Nancy. I do so want to strangle him. Right, Friday Lambda? I want to make him purple. If Matt was staying in the nursery, where's his luggage? Right there by his cot. It's not there now. But it was there, just last night. I remember seeing it when I peeked in to see if he'd finally decided to reappear. At least, I think I saw it last night. If it's not there now, perhaps Denol moved it, took it to storage or something. Because I know I saw it after Matt went missing. So it's around here somewhere, just like he's around here somewhere. I'm sure of it. Did you know when you decided to hold your wedding here that half the place is pretty much rubble? Oh yes. Mind you, I didn't even know that Castle Malloy existed until Grandpapa died and I was notified that I'd inherited it. At which point, the executor of his estate sent me pictures and assured me that despite its appearance, it was, in fact, habitable. It looks like a bomb went off in it. No doubt, because one did. <laughs> one summer night in 1944, this place, or half of it at least, just suddenly blew up. It was rumored that my great-uncle Brendan was working on something that involved a new kind of rocket fuel. He was killed along with his wife and young daughter. Apparently, they all just vaporized. Which, I guess, is why Denol claims the nursery, where the little girl spent most of her time, is haunted. I'm gonna go play detective now. As soon as you find out anything, let me know. Heh <laughs> gonna avoid that room, like the plague. <laughs> Whoops, don't need to go that way. I know what you mean, Yokose, Yokose the Hedgehog. It's like, they aren't too obtrusive. They're pretty easy to complete, and it makes sense for the plot. I mean, that's why Nancy's here, is for a wedding. So, and they make sense, and they're kind of fun. Alright, so this is the thing that we need for the... Aha! Okay, we're gonna take that. Um, put the paper on top. How do we do this again? We put the ink on first, and then we put the paper, and then we press it. Exactly, Ray Marie. That's what I'm saying. Do you feel like Kyler talks a lot in this game? <laughs> she kind of does. Alan Payne. That's kind of weird. 
Yeah, best man Alan Payne. Not Kit Foley? Hmm. Greetings, Amanda. Welcome. This actually seems like kind of an easy way to make invitations. Can I make my wedding invitations this way? <laughs> it seems a little bit more uh, affordable, too. Okay, we only needed to make three, it looks like. Cool. Now there's money over here, apparently. Aha! There is. So we could get a fortune from Madame Isabel. Let's do it. Hey, Madame Isabel. I would like a fortune. I would like a fortune. She outright refuses to use different colors. Oh, hey! Don't let the turkeys get you down. Name that game. Who said it? Don't let the turkeys get you down. I love the drama between the characters and wish there was more of it. Also, where are the rest of the guests? This is a good question, Nadia. <laughs> we can do this puzzle now. Which I normally can solve, but I also have the solution. Which begs the question why they bought other colored ink when they're just using black ink for the papers. Good point. Okay. Time for a slider puzzle. Hi everyone, just popping in to say I won't be around for long. Hopefully I'll be back in time for the end. We shall see. Well, glad you could pop in, Amanda. Thanks so much for joining. The final scene, Joseph. Exactly. Good old Joseph Hughes. One of my favorite characters. Yes, Joseph Hughes. Okay, so now we can... Ooh, um... Where are those lights in the tower coming from? That is a very valid question, Nancy. <laughs> Ghosts, I mean. Most likely. We can do a little bit of exploring on the grounds here. What can we find? Little garden. Aha. So that what that crow's doing in there. Oh, it's a crow. Ah! <laughs> that actually made me jump. <laughs> okay, so we'll need to find a code for the leprechauns. I, Kyler, choose you, Matt, as my friend, my companion, love, through life's trials. She's having a hard time. What am I doing? This is wrong. Kyler is having a hard time writing her vows. Does she mean the wedding is wrong, or does she mean the vows are wrong? Don't ask questions you are not prepared for the answer, Stu Nancy. Exactly. Should we walk off the edge? Oh no! Ah! <laughs> Good news, your lantern magically turned into a parasail, and you floated down to the rocks below. The bad news, just kidding, it turned into an anvil made by Acme. Beep beep! Were they allowed to do that without copyright? That's kind of funny. Okay, there's a well. There's this, like, fairy circle up here, which is very cool. So cool. There's a... the bog down below here. Yep, yeah, here's the bog. Let's walk in the bog. Ooh. Ooh. What is that? There's a complicated puzzle at the end of the game. How hard is it for you, Caitlin? I'm not sure I can get over there without falling in. 
I'll give it a try. <laughs> the crow just watches us sink into the bog. <laughs> That's morbid. By the time Kit and Kyler arrived, you'd only sunk in up to your waist. The bad news, when they tried to pull you out, they sank in up to their chins. <laughs> oh no. The puzzle at the end, Raymarie, is... Um, the solution isn't hard, but it takes a really long time to get. Like, the solution is easy to find, but it's going to take us a long time to complete. So that'll be fun. I don't usually mind the puzzles in this game. Like, they're, they're a lot, but for the most part, I kind of enjoy them. But that chemical puzzle is, is pretty rough. Acme is also in San Diego, so who knows? Don't want to spoil the puzzle if not everybody has seen it. Yeah, that's a good good idea. And then over here, we have this, like, wall thing. To get us to the sheeps. Can we talk about how this game had much more of a sheep presence than the Shattered Medallion, even though the Shattered Medallion's trailer made it seem like sheep were going to be very prominent? I feel cheated out of um, my sheep. <laughs> the trailer was literally like, sheep and more sheep and more sheep. And then there were like, no sheep. They were in the distance. Okay. So, slider puzzle. I usually go with the strategy that it's best to do one corner at a time. So this is clearly the top corner. Um, it's gonna be this one, I believe. Okay, and then that'll go there, but then this head needs to go over here. Okay, first corner complete, bottom corner next. So does that mean we are having mutton for supper? <laughs> no, save the sheep. Um, this one, that's going to go below it. Probably that, I would imagine. Okay, basically we need that to go after that one. There we go. And then, is it this one? That looks great. And then the body of the dragon, which, I mean, it could be, is it that? That looks right. I need that to go after. Or no, before. Okay. Half done. <laughs> New Zealand has a lot of sheep, but it isn't... But isn't it also famous for films? Mm-hmm. Never could solve a slider puzzle by myself. Friday Lambda, yeah, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit was... Yeah, exactly. I just feel cheated out of sheep. <laughs> Yeah, New Zealand just looks so pretty. They sort of played up the natural landscape of New Zealand, but I definitely feel like it could have been done more so. That hell have to go down here. Okay, though. Let's see. <clears throat> Oh, whoops. Is 
This has to go first. And then this one can follow. There we go. And then this goes here. And then that'll have to go down. It's gonna have to go first. There we go. It looks like a piece is missing. We did it! Thank you. And now we can go take a walk to the Screaming Banshee Inn. Great location. Love the Screaming Banshee Inn. Didn't feel like New Zealand. This game, however, really feels like Ireland. Right. That vibe is important. If you're going to have a mystery in a cool location, you better make that location visible. No vacancy at the Screaming Banshee Inn. So, you're not so keen on staying at the castle after all, then? I'm staying there. I just wanted to talk to you. Come to me for a bit of aid and advice, did you? Well, I've got none to give. Not till I got the day's troubles behind me and a crow's nest in front of me. Huh? <laughs> the mix maid suddenly took ill, leaving poor Seamus on his own, running back and forth trying to mix and serve at the same time. I ordered soon as I walked in, yet here I sit, dying of thirst. I'll do no talking till I get me crow's nest, and there's the sorry truth of the matter. But now, were some spry and spunky lass to lend poor Seamus a hand by taking over the mixin' for a while, that would surely speed the plow. Speed the plow. <laughs> That's very true, Friday Lambda. That's true. I could have clicked on the arch too, but I kind of like walking through the dark. I just enjoy the ambiance. Sounds good to me. I'll see to it you get your crows whatever ASAP. Gonna play mix made for a while, are ya? Well, here's what you're to do. I'll take the orders and put the tickets up here. Each ticket will have no more than two drinks on it. And to save time, I draw little pictures instead of writing out their names. The mixin' book will tell ya which little picture stands for what drink. It'll also tell ya what's in each drink and how to make each drink. Now, to pour something, put the silver mixin' glass under either the juice tap or the beer tap. Then, Press whatever button the mixin' book tells you to press. The book will also tell you how many times to press it. If the drink needs blending, you'll see a picture of a blender at the top of the column in the book. You're to put the solid ingredients into the blender first, then pour whatever's in the mixin' glass into the blender. Then press the red button, and when the blending's done, just reach under the counter and find the serving glass that's pictured in the book. Put the serving glass on the grey mat, and pour everything from the blender into the serving glass. If the drink doesn't need blending, just find the right serving glass, put it on the grey mat, and pour everything you've poured into the mixing glass into the serving glass. Then, add anything else the book tells you to add, put the serving glass on the tray to the right of the ticket it goes to, and start fixing the next drink. Soon as you've made all the drinks on a ticket, ring the bell, and I'll serve them up. Just remember, if the orders start coming thick and fast, and the tickets start piling up, you're to make the drinks on the ticket closest to the bell first. Now, you'll be making no mistakes, I'm sure. But if you do, just toss the glass into the rubbish bin down there to the right and start over. Mind you, lass, you must do the mixing fast and proper. The quicker you mix, the more tips you'll be keeping. To work with, you know. Those are some comprehensive directions. And yeah, Nadia, I totally agree. Like, it would make a lot of sense, actually, for Nancy to return to another country because she does that in plenty of other uh, places around the US so why not um, why not in other countries too I totally agree one this is my favorite puzzle of this whole game Two, three, four. But I'm obsessed with the cooking puzzle, so is anyone really surprised? You didn't make what they asked for. I thought I did. Is that not a crow's nest? 
Okay. Um, tomato. One, two, three, four. That. It goes in this. And then I get ice and a lime. Isn't that a crow's nest? You did something wrong, lass. What did I do wrong? <laughs> I'm confused. Um, hmm. Yeah, they totally did mess up Sunny June. Am I putting the wrong thing in? That? That? It doesn't say to blend it, does it? Yeah, you don't blend it. Huh. Well, what am I doing wrong? Two, three, four. Put it all in. And then add ice and a lime. I'm so confused. How is that not right? And a bog punch is one, two, one, two, one. One, two, one, two, three, four. Is it a shorter glass? No, it's the tall glass. With a lemon. Oh, well, now it works. <laughs> the second one was wrong. You need two drinks. Uh, I'm also obsessed with the cooking puzzles. Yes, they're so good. My favorite cooking puzzles also, the um the snack shop in Waverly. One, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. An afterglow. And then another crow's nest. One, one, two, three, four. One. Okay, here we go with some ice and lime. Another round completed. And then just a uh, ugly mug outlaw root beer. That one's simple. And then another afterglow. One, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. In a tall glass. You do fine work, miss. All done and dusted, are ya? Thank you, miss. Take what's in the tip jar. And the next time you help out, you can keep the tips then as well. Oh, I forgot the lemon the first time. You make a mean crow's nest, girl. Well done. Now, I'm to tell you what happened to the Sassenach, am I? I'm sorry, happened to the what? The Sassenach. The Englishman. The one Kyler was supposed to be marrying. Well, what happened to him is this. The she took him. The good people. Whisked him straight off to their world, they did. By the good people, you mean fairies? You'll not be hearing me call him that. All of us have a name we prefer, and with them, the good people it is. So that's what I call him, and you'd be wise to do the same. Oh, totally, Raymarie. There's one that's made with, like, milk and ice cream, so it's basically just like a milkshake. I want that one. I can't remember which one it is, so we'll have to do this puzzle again at some point. Just what are these good people going to do with him? Whatever they please. He's in their world now, and he'll not be coming back. That's as much of the truth as we'll ever know. Tis not the first time the good people have seen fit to meddle in the affairs of Castle Malloy. Caused the explosion they did. The one that destroyed half the castle? Brendan, his wife, Caitlin, used to own this place, she did. Aye, and their little girl, Fiona. All three were lost to the world forever when the place blew. But the blame lay not with Malloy. It was the good people. They'd taken a shine to Fiona, is why. And they knew that little girls, no matter how much they're adored by we folk or mortals, sooner or later, all little girls grow up and grow old. The good people couldn't bear to see this happen to their beloved Fiona, so they made full sure it never did. Sounds to me like the good people are actually just the opposite. They have their ways, and we have ours, is all. That's just the way of things. Got plans for you, they do. The fairies? Uh, the good people? What makes you say that? 
I meant to pocket your car keys for safekeeping on my way over here, but I couldn't find them. You mean my keys weren't in the car? Aye, that's exactly my meaning. Taken they were. The good people want you to be staying. Yeah, isn't Sassnock like a, a word of contempt for people from England that people in Ireland use? Isn't that what Sassnock is? The name of this place, just what exactly is a banshee? A woman, one of the good people, as alive as you and me, with wild hair almost as long as the tattered grey robe billowing up around her whenever she appears. Sometimes she takes on the form of a hooded crow, but it's the sound she makes, her terrible wailing, that strikes fear in the human heart. Because when a mortal hears the wail of a banshee, it means someone is about to die. I think you're right about that, Friday Lambda. <laughs> I saw someone with long hair and a grey robe outside the castle tonight. Did you know? She... it ran across the road in front of me. That's why my car's in the ditch. Not till I was fifty and four did I see a banshee. To see one at your age, on your very first night in Ireland. A <laughs> special ass you are indeed. Greetings, Maria. So glad you could join for one of your favorite games. I love this one. Do banshees ever leave things behind, like, say, little dolls? Do not be mistaken banshees for Santa Claus now. <laughs> A warning is all they leave behind about something that's coming and can't be stopped. For Santa Claus. Do you dislike all Englishmen as much as you dislike Matt Simmons? Or is he special somehow? I've little use for any Sassnach. But I took a dislike into this one soon as I laid eyes on him. Arrogant he was. Cocky. Disrespectful. Foolish. Always touching things he shouldn't. Going places he didn't belong. Worse than a stray dog that one was. What about his friend Kit? Aye. He may talk like a Yank and live like a Brit, but there's Irish in the lad. I saw it right off. Little wonder he's in love with the girl. They'll make a fine pair. Whoa, wait a minute. Kit's not in love with Kyler. Blind, are you now? Loves her, he does indeed. He's all but wearing a sign saying so. He came to the wedding early to make sure there'd never be a wedding. Only the good people saw to that for him. Ah, the luck of the Irish. I'd better get going. Good night to you. Okay, I need to do this again because I want to see the different recipes. Which ones would you guys try? Or which one would be your first choice? There's the Afterglow, Bog Punch, Brown River, Mean Fiddler. Ooh, that just looks like sparkling orange juice. Leprechaun's Lunch. That's what I want. I want the Leprechaun's Lunch so bad. Looks like a mint milkshake. Fairy Drink. That also looks delicious. Peat Bog. Smuggler's Gold. Bleeding Horse. Canali's Folly, Green Isle, Crow's Nest, or the Ginger Beer, the Root Beer, or the Birch Beer. <laughs> Love it. Which, what's your guys' orders? What can I mix up for you? This one has a short glass. Ice and lemon. Bog Punch. Or no, Peat Bog. It's my fave, or one of my faves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Although the tomato juice with milk is a little bit odd. Yeah, I don't know if I'd do the peat bog. Just changed my mind. Canali's Folly. One, two, one, two, one. With some ice. And a bog punch. One, two, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, three, four. With a lemon. Leprechaun lunch, 1,000%, 1 million percent. You do fine work, miss. Fairy drink, fairy drink. Crow's nest looks tempting. Cannot beat a beer, though. This is true. Well, here's a ginger beer for you. <laughs> Also, fairy drink is your second because we're getting a second beverage. There, of course. 
<gasps> Someone's getting a leprechaun lunch. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, and this is going in the blender with a scoop of ice cream. And we blend that, and it goes in a tall glass. Probably the folly drink, no clue. Is it really tomato? I thought it was pomegranate. Oh, maybe it is pomegranate. That would make more sense. Another round completed. Sasnak is supposed to be a derogatory term. I thought so. Okay, there's games over here that we can play. We do eventually have to play one so we can get the whistle um, prize. It doesn't look like we can... I'm going to not do that just yet. We'll go back. Nancy is legal to drink in Ireland. This is true. She is 18. I kind of want that, that broken fiddler one, the sparkling orange juice. That sounds really good. But yeah, definitely Leprechaun's Lunch is going to be my first choice. Anything with ice cream. I am happy with. Alright. Check in with Kit. What's going on? If you and Matt are best friends, how come he didn't make you his best man? Matt felt like it would be a good move for him politically if he asked this guy he knows from work, Alan Payne, to be his best man, and I said fine, don't worry about it, no big deal. Have you ever been up in the tower? Uh-uh. You saw the stairs, or what's left of them. There's no way to get up there. I could have sworn I saw lights coming from it. Perhaps it was the good people come a-calling on their good friend Anal. Or maybe it was just reflected moonlight or something. <laughs> so if you're thinking Matt's up there, forget it. Ain't no way. Good talking to you. Stay out of trouble. Oh, Ray Marie, I want to try butterbeer so bad. Many of you know that I'm a huge Harry Potter nerd, and I've never gotten to try, like, real official butterbeer, and I want it. <laughs> I want it so much. Yeah, the way they describe it in the books, Friday Lambda, doesn't sound good, but the way that they make it is basically just like a butterscotch milkshake, it sounds like, and I want that. <laughs> I want that in my life. Did you finish the programs? Yep, but I noticed that they say the best man is someone named Alan Payne. If Kit is Matt's best friend, why isn't Kit the best man? Matt said that's the way Kit wanted it. He got here early too. But when Matt vanished, Alan was certain that Matt was playing a joke and refused to be the butt of it. So he went back to London, saying he'll reappear only when Matt does and not a moment before. You know, perhaps you should give Alan a call. Zero zero four four zero two zero seven nine four six zero four eight one. He may have seen something while he was here that could help you find Matt. You'll have to use the phone down the road at the inn, however. My cell phone gets absolutely no reception here. I'd better get to work. As soon as you find out anything, let me know. Right, Maria, Nancy is ageless. 18 to drink in the UK, but you can drink at home with parental consent from around five years old. For real? That's so interesting. Okay, I want to point out this beautiful scene here. With this cloth swaying in the wind. How stunning. Ugh. This was one of my favorite games when I played it for the first time. Big fan. And it's 18 in Ireland. That's so interesting. It's different in every single state in America, which is kind of confusing. But so like we live in Minnesota, but in Wisconsin, the rule is that you can drink in a bar if your parents are with you and if they give you consent, if you're um, under 21, like if you're 18 to 21. So when my brother was under 21, we would go for family visits over the border in Wisconsin. <laughs> Which I just think is funny. Oops. We're going to the phone booth. To call Alan. This phone booth is like nasty. <laughs> I'd be terrified that there's like giant bugs in here or something. Hello? Yes, hi. Uh, my name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from Castle Malloy. I'm Kyler Mallory's maid of honor. Yes, I remember that name. Has Matthew finally put an end to that ridiculous prank of his? No, I'm afraid he's still at it. But if you have a second, could I ask you some questions? 
It should be a minute or two before my ride gets here. What's on your mind? Did you see or hear anything strange while you were at Castle Malloy? If you mean, did I get the impression that the castle was haunted or enchanted or anything like that? No. Frankly, I was too distracted by the strange human goings-on to pay much attention to anything else. What do you mean? I mean, for three people who purport to be friends, it seemed to me they did an inordinate amount of fighting. For instance, the evening before Matt disappeared, he and Kit had a terrible row. I couldn't make out exactly what was being said, but they both sounded very angry. Furious, I dare say. In fact, the next time I saw Kit, he was sporting a black eye. And the next morning, Matt and Kyla had a go at each other. Nothing physical, mind you, and once again, I couldn't make out what was said, but I promise you, they were quite put out with each other. I was more than happy to bid the lot of them farewell, though I imagine I'll be returning to the castle before too long. Matt is bound to find his prank as tedious as everyone else does eventually. I must be off. Nancy, it was a pleasure venting to you. Hopefully before too long we shall meet in person. Cheers. Hmm. Lots of fighting and black eyes and such going on, eh, guys? Gonna have to go confront you about that. <laughs> According to the wiki, it's just water, butterscotch, and sugar in the books. But then the actual recipe for making it in real life is brown sugar, butter, heavy cream, rum extract, and cream soda. <gasps> that sounds so good. Yeah, that, like, heavy cream would be uh, real important. Gotta balance that out. Sounds like a recipe for type 2 diabetes. <laughs> I mean, fair point. <laughs> How's it going? Alan Payne told me he overheard you and Matt arguing the day before Matt disappeared. And pretty much right before you <laughs> walked into that door. What were you doing talking to Alan Payne? Sheesh. I thought he might know something that could help us find Matt. I told you, Matt bailed. He doesn't want to be found. Look, like I said, Alan Payne doesn't really know Matt or me that well, okay? The fact is, he misunderstood what he heard. Matt and I have been friends for more than 12 years. We were just fooling around. Fooling around? <laughs> you ended up with a black eye. I told you that was an accident. I'm clumsy. What were you two talking about? I, I forget. That's how inconsequential it was. Hey, I just remembered. Kyla wants me to do the seating chart for the wedding dinner. Like I said, I can't bring myself to tell her there's not going to be a wedding. Anyway, I need to get to work on it, so you're gonna have to excuse me. Of Course, you could always give it a shot. You just have to figure out where each guest should sit by taking into account their needs and preferences. What do you say? Sure, I can do that. Excellent. Just fill it out and bring it back to me when you think you've got everyone sitting in the right place. Kit disgusts me. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Okay. No invited guest can sit next to another guest of the same color. Members of the wedding party must sit together. I love logic puzzles like this. These are so fun. Members of the wedding party must sit together. So the wedding party is going to be over here. On the long side of the table, Rose is sitting directly next to Taylor. Oh, also, Jane from either Blackmore Manor or... Secret of the Old Clock, Lori from Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon, Rose, Message in a Haunted Mansion, Heather, Danger by Design, Linda, Curse of Blackmore Manor, Henry, Crystal Skull, Kit, Taylor Sinclair from Secret of Scarlet Hand, Richard Topham, Secret of the Old Clock, and John from Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. So, Kyler knows everyone that we've met in mysteries that we've solved. Adjoining corner seats are the same gender... Lori wants to be directly opposite of Kit. I bet she does. Guest seats will alternate by gender on the long side. Kyler wants her maid of honor on her right for the toasts. Okay, so... Because unless oops. and until it gets done, afraid I'm going to be pretty much incommunicado. I was starting to do it without even um, being able to do it. Okay, Kyler. And she wants Nancy on her right side. So Matt's going to be here. And then Alan. Just imagine all these culprits sitting with Nancy. <laughs> Just chilling. Chilling at the dinner. Matt is more disgusting, though. Kyler. Taylor wants an end chair on any side. Jane, Alan, Henry, and Linda are all sitting on different sides of the table. Matt is two seats to the right of Kit. Okay, so Kit goes here. 
within a six seat span linda is to the right of john and to the left of heather so on the long side of the table we've got rose somewhere taylor somewhere and richard somewhere Lori wants to be directly opposite of kit um taylor wants an end chair on any side Jane, Alan, Henry, and Linda are all on different sides of the table. Jane, Henry, Linda. Within a six seat span, Linda is to the right of John and the left of Heather. John and Linda. Probably. Okay. Members. Adjoining corner seats of the table are the same gender. So Jane should probably go here, and Henry should probably go here. I'll still be watching the stream, but it'll be on my phone for a bit, so I won't be able to post comments. Sounds good, Ray Marie. Enjoy lurking. Wait, was Henry the culprit in Crystal Skull? Wasn't it the garden lady? Yeah, it was the garden lady. Not all of them are culprits. Some of them are. Some of them aren't. Some of them aren't. Um, Jane, Allen, Henry, and Linda are all on different sides. Members of the wedding party must sit together on the long side of the table. Rose is sitting directly next to Taylor and to the left of Richard. Adjoining corner seats of the table are the same gender. No invited guest can sit next to another guest of the same color. So we did that. Members of the wedding party must sit together. Long side of the table, Rose is directly next to Taylor to the left of Richard. Corner seats are the same gender, which so far, yes. Lori is directly opposite of Kit. Guest seats will alternate by gender on the long side. Yes, but we still have this little problem. That looks right. Um, Kyler's maid of honor is on the right. Taylor wants an end chair on any side so he can run away the slime ball. <laughs> Jane, Alan, Henry, and Linda are all on different sides. Matt is two seats to the right of Kit. Within a six seat span, Linda is to the right of John. No, yes. Linda is to the right of John and to the left of Heather. Okay, I am going to call that a solution. How's the seating chart coming? Could you take a look at it? You bet. This looks great. Wow, you did it. I'm impressed. So now we can talk. Yeah, now we can talk. Oh, hey, actually, you might want to take a look at this first. I found it on the floor in Matt's room when I was looking for him. What is it? Frankly, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. But maybe it will to you. Take it. If anybody can figure out what Matt was doing with it, you can, I'm sure. Good luck. Yeah, now we can talk. Okay, so this is the solution to the leprechauns in the garden. I'm going to leave you guys right here for just a second. I'm going to run and take a quick bathroom break and refill my water bottle, but I will return momentarily. Enjoy the creepy cloth flowing in the wind. <laughs> I'll be right back.
And we're back. Oh, greetings, Demon Slayer. Welcome. No, you are not too late. Stop deflecting us, Kit. <laughs> nice redirect, Kit. Oh, Kit, being so shady. I don't know how many times I can play through this game, but I never notice the background. Oh, isn't it pretty? How you doing, incomplete name? Um, this castle is huge. Just gonna say they are very lucky that they aren't experiencing the more common Eng Irish weather, which involves lots of rain. Exactly. Or the fact that this castle should be frigid. Yeah, no kidding, with the giant hole in the wall. And really, only the library would be habitable. They've got a lot of fireplaces going, at least. Don't they feel cold in winters with this hell of a hole in the castle? Damp and dirty. Thanks, Maria. Alright, let's go out to the garden with our new, um, leprechaun solution. I love this music so much. Celtic music is one of my favorite genres. I'm doing good! Been having a very lovely weekend. Okay... Leprechauns? Do I have you written down in my handy dandy notebook? I believe I do. Okay. You are at three o'clock. You are at six o'clock. I think. You are at nine o'clock. You are at 12 o'clock. I think I've got this written down correctly. You are at 6 o'clock. You are at 12, and you are at 9. No? No. Okay. <laughs> I have that written down wrong. Top down third person, my favorite. Exactly. Okay. I just couldn't uh, interpret my notes correctly. Right back and front. There we go. Um, cool. It's a little little Nancy doll. That's not terrifying at all. We need all those, and we got another coin. Very helpful. There's an Easter egg involving the leprechauns. Oh, let's get an Easter egg. What should we do? What do we do, Friday Lambda? I'm assuming twist them a certain way. This crow has been very busy. <laughs> back, but on a different computer. Welcome back, Raymarie. I'm gonna open up my ginger peach sparkling water. Anyone drinking anything or snacking on anything? Just gonna say, the fence doesn't look that high. Couldn't Nancy just jump it? Yes, she could. <laughs> Pretty easily, actually. That's a very good point. Why doesn't Dancy... Dancy. Why doesn't Dancy do that more? <laughs> Why doesn't Nancy do that more? <clears throat> just scale walls and climb fences, Nancy. <clears throat> Don't you get a thing at the end for spinning them around a bunch? Made yourself a nice cup of jasmine green tea. I love jasmine green tea. The jasmine gives it such a nice floral taste. Oh, love that. If anyone knows the leprechaun, I see you're having fun with leprechauns. Exactly. <laughs> If anyone knows the Easter egg solution for the leprechauns, please feel free to add it into chat. But I'm going to go up very quickly. Ooh, iced coffee and ginger tea. Yes. Nancy is secretly Spider-Man and she doesn't want to give herself away. Okay, this part, I have a lot of memories for this part. 
And it looks like we need to do an inverse rainbow. So we're going to start with purple, indigo, blue, green. Wait. Wait. Did that wrong. It's more like this. Purple, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. Or is it just order of the rainbow? Red, orange, yellow, green. Whoops, that's not green. <laughs> red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Why are there two blues? I'm confused. It's on the other half of the gardens. So I know it, but I don't simultaneously. <laughs> Ooh, some Korean food. Yum, Maria. Okay. Purple, blue, blue, green, yellow, orange, orange, red. Or is it purple, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red? Or is it red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, purple? Roy G. Biv, Nancy. Roy G. Biv. What is that? What is what? <laughs> what is what? What did you see? <laughs> what am I missing? You need to go to that stone circle on the east half of the garden to get the code for the leprechauns. Oh, gotcha. I see. Guys, I can, I'm confused. What am I missing here? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. And then it's like a darker blue, and then it's purple. Ah! I did it. <laughs> Took me a while. <laughs> Much longer than I care to admit. Okay, we got a wooden plank. And now we know how to get through the bog. Which is good. Whoa, it's the crow. Oh! Whoa. Bad crow. Bad crow. Uh. Uh. Um, um. <laughs> You're right. There has to be a logical explanation for what we just saw. So I'm going to calm down, relax, and trust that you will discover what that thing was. You are going to figure it out, aren't you, Nancy? I promise. Well, that was terrifying. Attack of the Crow. <laughs> Some of you may have, uh, I've heard this story that I've told before, but the first time I played this game, I was playing it in a dark room on a laptop, and uh, that moment happened, the moment with the banshee, like, flying up in the window, and my mother came up behind me and was trying to tell me something, so she tapped me on the shoulder right as that moment was happening, and she scared me so bad that I, like, flung my arm around and, like, whacked her with my arm. <laughs> And she was so mad at me, and she was like, these games are making you violent. <laughs> it's like, mother, no, <laughs> they're not. You just scared me because there's a banshee outside. A banshee. Which is pretty funny playing this game on Mother's Day. And remembering that moment. <laughs> just throw the book at her, Nancy. Delivery! Banshee looked like she lost a fight with an electrical socket. That hair, though. I suppose it probably is giving off a lot of electricity. Ooh. Yeah, Golden Moon, there's definitely a, a, a suspension of reality with this one, for sure. Oh my gosh, it terrified me, Raymarie. 
That was honestly on her, right? It was her fault. <laughs> Read a room, mom. <laughs> like, look at the screen. Does that not look terrifying? Maybe don't tap me on the shoulder. <laughs> Video games cause violence. Love it. <laughs> she was so mad at me. Okay, so on trail, if there's a little rock, it means forward one, right two, left three, down one. Okay, I think I got it. So this means forward one. This means to the right one. Forward two, one, two, one, two. I think it would be possible, Raymarie. Um, it would have to involve using a lot of debug items from the live edit mode because it's so like dilapidated. It's possible, but it would be, one would need to be very creative. Denal can be the crotchety butler, exactly. One, two. Yeah, but the Sims will hate the place. One, 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 two. I'm really glad we only have to do this once. This is a convoluted bog. They hate it when you don't build an entire wall. Aren't those rock formations called cairns? Yes, I love cairns. I think cairns are adorable. So excited for the sim stuff coming this summer. Thank you, Sarah. I'm really excited to start filming some sim stuff again. Make a refurbished castle. That's true. I could renovate it. That would be kind of fun. It's Hagrid. Hi, Hagrid. Can I be your friend, Hagrid? It's some kind of rock. <laughs> Would it be possible for you to do some of your episodes live? It would be so much fun to play with you live. That sounds really cool. I hadn't considered that, but I really like that idea. Jetpack! Yeah! Looks like I need a key. Locked box. New thing for the dollhouse. We need wool to finish this sheep to get into the dollhouse, basically. Ew! Lots of bugs. Um, and if we look in the Herbs and Remedies book, it tells us the different flowers, and it tells us Bugbane to get rid of insects. We need equal parts of Tansy, Pennyroyal, Wormwood, Thyme, and Catnip. And I have that written down somewhere in my handy dandy detective notebook. Hilda from Deception Island would love this bog. She so would. Right, Sarah? It's totally Hagrid's hut. Yes, this game visually is so fantastic, Demon Slayer. Where are you? Notebook. The last time Hagrid had a strange woman visit his hut, they torched it. Good point. Okay, Tansy. 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 Penny Royal. Wormwood, thyme, and catnip. Place an infested area. Looks like something Lulu would eat. Poof. Oh, I wish it was that easy. This hut is so fun. I love this hut. So cool. I think that's all we can look at for now. We need to get to the sheep. What creature lived in this cage? That is a scary thought. Or is it just a cage for Fiona's bugs? Very good question. So if we go to the crosses over yonder. Does this make the witch with her jetpack kind of like Buckbeak? <laughs> yes. Okay, 1845 gives us the swirly lines. 1916 gives us a diamond with lines. 
1801 gives us swirly triangle. Ooh, the Hutton Sims would be fun. You just killed her pet bugs. <laughs> I actually really love the idea of making the hut as a speed build. That would be super fun. With like the bog surrounding it. Oh, love it. Okay. 1801 is the try this one. And 1845 is this one. And 1916 is this one. Magic wall. Totally realistic. How could you? <laughs> I'm not a big fan of bugs. Sheep! <laughs> Come to me, sheep. This is so cool. These Celtic... I think they're Celtic. Statues. Love these. They're so cool. So according to this, the way to get the leprechaun code is to do the following. Turn the bottom stone on the pillar... with the compartment in front of it to Lugnasa. Turn the middle stone once and the top stone all the way around. Okay, okay, scary banshee. Ooh, shooting star. Turn the bottom to Lugnasa. Now which one would be Lugnasa? I think... Which one is Lugnasa? Uh, I don't know which one Lugnasa is, though. It's a fairy ring after that sheep! It's Lugnasa. It's not that one. It's not that one. Maybe it's that one? Guys, I'm confused which one's Lugnasa. <laughs> Turn the middle stone once and the top stone all the way around. I don't know which one Lugnasa is. We might have to do that when I know what Lugnasa is. <laughs> Shooting star, make a wish. Everyone make a wish. Quick. Sheep. <laughs> sheep. Sheep. Why won't they come to me? I like the sheep. Why won't they be my friend? Kit Foley. With his horrible drawing skills, honestly. Like, no. Parking lot here weird stones just showing how he would totally demolish everything oh hi crow yes hi nice nice to see you and then up here will be the sheep pen whoop don't walk off the edge nancy we already did that Where's the sheep? Sheep! Be my friend. Where on earth is the sheep pen? The sheep hunting is exactly why I will never play this game again. If they didn't run out, it would be a lot less frustrating. <laughs> that gear is so hidden. I kind of love it, but it's also kind of, like, hard. Okay, the Wooly No More machine. So we need to go talk to Denal about shearing the sheep. A lot of designers can't draw. I kind of suck at it, but that's why I use a computer. Well, that makes sense. The dude can't even draw properly. Totally wouldn't buy anything from him. Sheep on the loose! I want all the sheep. 
All right, Denal. I need to shear some sheep, which means I'm going to need the whistle, which means we're going to need to play the difference detective game. What's on your mind, then? Sometimes I hear this strange kind of wailing sound when I'm in the castle. Have you ever heard it? These ears don't work so well now. Even the pattern of rain is beginning to slip by them. But, the situation being what it is, by my reckon, a banshee, you heard. Greetings, Paul. Um, we're about an hour and 40 minutes into the stream. You mean someone in the castle is going to die? Aye. Someone as in Matt? How they know what they know, and why they do what they do, are mysteries far beyond mortal solution. But be assured, lass, someone at Castle Malloy is doomed. What do you know about the stone pillars with all the weird writing on them? I've never been able to make heads or tails of them. Even bought me a book on Oam runes. Waste of good money, that was. Oam runes? All those lines. Ancient Celtic symbols they are. Runes. Spell out something. I lack the time and patience to work out just what. I wouldn't mind having a go at it. Do you think I could borrow your book? Sorry to say, I'm not in a lending mood at the moment, lass. A wee bit of me favorite drum music would put me right, but the band can't be playing it because their drummer took sick. Looking for someone to take his place, they are. I could probably fill in. I mean, not permanently, but... Go to it, then. One ditty is all. Play it well enough, and the book will be yours. Seamus will help you get started. Thanks, Seamus. What a fine last Who let the sheep the out? Who? Now here's what who? you do. Who? Who? Watch the cue. When it reaches the drum, just hit the corresponding section of the bore with the beater. Keep doing that till the song... The bore and with the beater. And if you kept the beat well enough, the band will split their tips with you. They're about to start. Just watch the bar... Keep your wits about ya, and you'll do fine. Okay. Bah! You hear sheepy sheepy? I will totally be saying that later. Oh, perfect, Friday Lambda. So next time we're there, we can um, get the Easter egg. Yeah, Paul, not too bad at all. Greetings, Luna. Welcome to the stream. Do you drink at all, or do you stick to non-alcoholic drinks like coffee and tea? Personally, I hate alcohol, especially beer. I very rarely drink. I will occasionally have a glass of wine. Um, but for me, it's just not something I've ever enjoyed. So I tend to do more like coffee and tea and water, juice. I really like like fancy juices and stuff. I love creature lore. Vampire and werewolf is boring when you start digging into all the creatures of European lore. Oh my gosh, I bet. Guitar hero, but Nancy Drew. Not bad. Brilliant. Here's your share of the Oh, you hate this puzzle, Maria? I actually really enjoy this one. Sweet as clover to the honeybee, that was. Here's the book. Keep it as long as you like. Now you'll not soon have need of it. Guitar Drum Hero Ireland Edition. <laughs> Will you be wanting something else from me then? Have you ever been to the other side of the bog? Do I look daft to you now? There is no walking across the bog. Once you fall in, there's no getting out. Oi, when I was your age, younger even, there was talk of an old gypsy woman who kept house in the bog, living all by herself, crazy as could be. But a tall tale is all it was. You stay clear of that bog, girl. 
There'll be no cross in it. Not if you're fond of living. <laughs> I'd better get going. Little do you know, Denal. Yeah, right, Demon Slayer? It annoys me too. Okay. Well, he hasn't told us that we need to do that yet. But we do have the book for the Oam Ruins now. Which is helpful. So what, how did I write down Lugnasarong? It's two. Two across is the L. Oh, they start at the bottom, don't they? Lore and tradition. Five letters. Written on the page, the letters read left, right, but on a stone marker, they read from bottom to top. That's what I was doing wrong. Okay, I know which one is Lugnasa. <laughs> Oops, got stuck on a tree. I hate it exactly for this reason. It is super frustrating because it's like, very easy to get the timing wrong if you're trying to actually go to the beat. You know, like most people would. Did you have to look at the wool holding part of the machine to trigger the sheet puzzle? I thought so, but I thought I looked at it, didn't I? Let's go and try. Because he didn't say anything about it, and usually he does. Hi, sheep. Come here. Oh, you're right, Demon Slayer. This is what I needed to look at. So there's no wool in here. Okay, now I bet he'll talk to me about it. That's my bad. Sheep! 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 <laughs> See, they're easy to find now, but when we actually need to find them, it's going to be very hard. Been doing music since I was five, and this just grinds my gears, for sure. Um... Maybe Nancy specifically, Ray Marie. We get her a third person view from um, Secret of the Old Clock and the Driving. That might be the first time. Greetings, Danny Nam. Welcome to the stream. What's on your mind then? Guess I'll go now. Be careful out there, lass. He won't let me do the sheep stuff. Okay, we're gonna do the ruins. I want to do the sheep. The flower puzzle is required to unlock the sheep thing. Ah. Yeah, no, we haven't done the flower puzzle yet. Let's go talk to Kyler. Because she hasn't asked us to, to get her a flower bouquet yet. I was wondering when she would. It's been a while. I guess I forgot to talk to her earlier. I meant to do that. But I forgot. Thankfully, I have you fellow detectives to help me figure out what we're missing. You have a lead? Mostly I have a question. Do you know anything about this sketch? I found it outside. It looks like a drawing for some kind of housing development for the land the castle sits on. Apparently Kit did them. Did you ask him to? No, and I seriously doubt Matt did either. Kit must have done those on his own. The question is, why? Anyway, I thought of something else you can do for me. Since there's a possibility, however remote, that there are forces at work around here that none of us completely understands, I think it only prudent to do what I can to counteract them. To that end, I would like to include these herbs and flowers in my wedding bouquets. According to Irish law, each of them is believed to be associated with things I could use a little more of right now. If you could pick them for me and put them in that vase over there, that would be wonderful. Here's a basket. This, of course, means that in spite of whatever it was I saw in the nursery, I still believe there will indeed be a wedding. Because no matter who or what took Matt, you're going to find him, Nancy. I have to believe that. Please don't let me down. I'll let you get back to your reading. Good luck. Why don't you do something, Kyler? <laughs> Happy to help, but... Right, Ray Marie? Come on, Denal. I made you a delicious crow's nest and you're not even enjoying it. How rude. She does look like Princess Fiona. I've always thought that too, Demon Slayer. Aren't these flowers that I need? 
Give me the flowers. Maybe it's the roses inside. Okay. Got some roses. Does this game make you think about getting married in a castle? That would be so cool. Our wedding venue is kind of like a... It's outside. Like the ceremony area is outdoors in a beautiful prairie area with like wildflowers and trees surrounding it which I really enjoy like the naturey aspect of it I really love and then there the inside option is kind of like a rustic farmhouse barney type inside but it's still like really feminine and pretty really happy with it looking at venues was a lot of fun don't forget the Easter thing we were trying to do oh yes yeah, I will remember that. I love how Nancy never runs into Fiona here. Okay, we need one of these. I can't remember which one. Sage. Which looks like... This? This. Sage. Okay, now we need Vervain, Lavender, and Larkspur. Maybe not Castle Malloy, it's a little too run down. One thing I don't like about the flower puzzle is that they added pointless areas specifically to hide flowers. <laughs> That's true. I do like at some of the areas that like you can hear the banshee scream, so it makes it feel a lot more creepy. I like that part of it. By the bog, in the bog hut, all the way out in the middle of nowhere on the road, the castle arch and stone circle. Perfect. Oh, I love those ones. These little purple ones are so pretty. Thank you, Sarah. I'm really excited for it. Ugh, those are pretty too. Post on Instagram the day before. Oh, that's such a nice idea. <clears throat> I totally will do that, Sarah. Thank you. A flower hunting we go. A flower hunting we go. Hi ho, the sheepy o. A flower hunting we go. Sheep. <laughs> The sheep are so cute. Sheep are my favorite farm animals because they're just so floofy and adorable. Okay, Banshee. Stop being terrifying, please. Okay, so Lugnasa is this one. Yeah, this one. And then we turn this one once to the right. And that one all the way around. It didn't work. The Instagram is wizardkittenyt Juan Pena. Yeah, for anyone who hasn't followed that, wizardkittenyt on Instagram. Been posting, trying to post pretty regularly on there. It's a lot of fun interacting with you guys there. I was wondering if it's the Banshee or Fiona just screaming. <laughs> Greetings, JK lady. You have church. Good luck. Those birds are scary. They are scary. Have a good time at church. Hi, oh the sheep -o. <laughs> I agree, Ray Marie. This place would have been really fun to see during the day. Do we maybe need to do it, um... After I've solved the puzzle? Because Lugnasa won. And then turn it all the way around. Try the top as Leo. It doesn't work. Greetings, Scanlan. Welcome to the stream. We're about two hours in. It's not working. How is Queen Mel doing today? She is doing great. She actually, um... Your flower hunting song was <laughs> me do a spit take with your tea. <laughs> uh, I'm here to entertain. <laughs> I 
should bring the flowers to Kyler. I have them all, don't I? What was I saying? There's so many things to focus on. What was I saying? Oh yeah, Queen Mel. So right before I was about to stream, like half an hour before I was about to stream, she came and sat on my lap and very stubbornly was like, I am not moving. I refuse to move. And she only comes and does that when I have to do something. Like when I'm about to get up and when I need to do something, that's when she decides to very stubbornly bun in my lap. So she's doing great. She's living her best queenly life. <laughs> The stars look so pretty, right? In the middle is fall. You swapped it to winter. Try the solution for autumn on that pillar, which would be Lugnasa, autumn, and Leo. Okay, we'll try that when we get back. I made because I was bored. I do that all the time. I'm not after your property. Then what are you after? Nothing. But why are you trying to tell me there's not going to be a wedding? Because Matt is gone. Matt would never walk out on me. Never. He still loves you, Kyler, but he's not ready to get married, and he just didn't know how to tell you. Oh, so he told you to tell me. Or was his leaving your idea? What'd you tell him, Kit? That I still have feelings for you? That it isn't over between us? Because it is. You know that, don't you? It is most definitely over. That's awesome. Thank you, Scanlon. I better not go in there. Okay, well, I'm going to have to go down here, and then I can go in there. Mel wanted to help you solve the mystery, that's why. Of course. She is nothing if not a gracious queen. Always willing to help. Oh, come on. Do I have to go all the way outside? Don't you know your only duty as her peasant is to be a new throne for her highness? <laughs> Pretty much. I clean the litter box, I give her food and water, and I am her throne. Yes, Swan Pena, exactly. Wizard Kitten YT on Instagram. What's going on? I found the sketch you did on the ground outside. What's it for? What, that? I was just messing around. See, I'm into real estate, and whenever I see an interesting tract of land, I like to sketch out how I'd develop it. Just to, you know, keep the juices flowing. It doesn't mean anything. I was just doodling. Great, so it's okay if I keep this. Uh, sure. Go right ahead. Sounds good, Friday Lambda. I found Matt's luggage in here, right over there. What? Over where? It was behind the cots. How'd it get there? Looks to me like someone was trying to hide it. Well, it wasn't me. Matt hit it. Oh my gosh. He didn't go back to London. He's been here the whole time. Kyla was right. Oh my gosh. You sound kind of disappointed. Marrying Kyla is the biggest mistake he could possibly make. If this means that's what he intends to do, you bet I'm disappointed. Right, Nadia? This love triangle is so good. Have you ever been to the little hut that's in the middle of the bog? No. Don't tell me you've been traipsing through the bog. Are you nuts? That stuff's like quicksand. Did Matt ever try to cross the bog? The only thing Denal ever said that made sense to Matt was stay away from the bog. And he did. And you'd be well advised to do the same. I couldn't help but overhear the discussion you and Kyler had in the library. <sighs> that sure didn't go like I planned. All this talk of fairy kidnappings and practical jokes. I just thought it was time to clear the air, but what happens? Not only did she accuse me of being the bad guy in all this, but as it turns out, she had it right, and I had it wrong. Matt didn't walk out on her. His luggage proves it. The part about your still having feelings for her, was she right about that too? Yeah. As for what, if anything, I'm gonna do about it, I haven't quite figured that out. Good talking to you. See ya. Ooh, good question, Friday Lambda. I feel like their wedding menu would be very traditional. Like they would have a chicken with some fancy herb sauce and they would have like a pork option. There would be like a vegetarian option. Like I feel like it would be very classic wedding food. You've picked all the flowers? Yep. Go ahead and put them in that vase. There you go. Splendid. Anything else to report? I found Matt's luggage hidden behind the cots downstairs by Kit's things. How did it get down there? 
It kind of looked like Kit was hiding it. Oh, don't be silly. Why would Kit do a thing like that? Well, anyway, that's a good thing. It means Matt's still around here, just as I've been saying all along. Anything else to report? I'll catch you later. Good luck. Ray Marie, yes. Um, we found Mel in a pumpkin patch in October when we were there getting pumpkins. And um, they had two little kittens for adoption that had been abandoned in that pumpkin patch. And Mel was one of them. And I took her home. She was about four months old at that time, and she's now six, so I've had her since then. But she is, um, when she was a kitten, she was so hyper and super needy. Like, she was bonkers. She would climb my leg all the time. She would wake me up in the middle of the night by, like, chewing on my hair. <laughs> it was honestly a really hard transition. A pumpkin patch, right? Isn't that cute, Sarah? It was a really hard transition, and I feel, I honestly feel bad now looking back at how I handled it because I definitely could have been more understanding of it. I was just like really frustrated, and it was like, but she was just a kitten. I shouldn't have been nearly as frustrated as I was. But she has since chilled out a little bit. She's still wacky, but I love her so much. <laughs> Abandoned in a pumpkin patch, isn't it? Sad. I love her even more now. Yep, that's her little story. Kid is so not over Kyle, it's so true. What's on your mind then? Would you by any chance know how Matt's luggage wound up hidden behind the cots in the Great Hall? That I would. I put it there. I told the Sassnach he was not to stay in Fiona's room, yet he did nonetheless. So, while he was out with the others, I took his bags and hid him, thinking to farce him to leave her room. Wasted time, that was. Turns out the good people had something else in mind. Good at finding things, are you? As a matter of fact, I am very good at finding things. Got something for you then. A key? Aye, to the sheep pin. The sheep I'm keeping on the castle grounds need bringing in so I can shear them first thing tomorrow. You want me to bring them in? There's ten of them is all. With that lantern of yours, you'll be done before you know. Go on now, take it. Just walk the grounds, and whenever you come upon a sheep, blow a whistle, and back they'll go to the barn. When you think all ten are in, go to the barn and make sure, then lock the place up, and that'll be that. Don't be looking at me like I've got three heads, lass. You can do it. Out with you now. There's work to be done. But I... I don't have a whistle. Were you not bragging less than one minute ago about how good you were at finding things? Well, yeah, but... Then find a whistle. And find a whistle. Yeah, Ray Marie. Um, the other kitten was just adopted by the people who owned the pumpkin patch, <clears throat> and I've actually seen pictures of that cat since. So it's <clears throat> <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> so it's nice to know that that kitten um also found a really good home. Oh, your cat that looked exactly like Mel was also a hair chewer. Yeah, it was really frustrating. Honestly, my anxiety got really bad when I had her as a kitten at first because she woke me up every night. I was, like, really stressed out with having such a wild little bonkers cat um, at first. So, like, my anxiety got so bad that I, like, felt like I almost wanted to give her up, which now that I think about, I, I hate that I got to that point, and I'm so, like, sad that I almost got to that point. And I'm really glad that... Um, things worked out where that didn't happen and she's still in my life because she's now my precious fur baby and I can't imagine life without her. You found your cat in the engine of your dad's truck. You're driving back from the States and we stopped for gas. Your dad opened the hood and there was a kitten. Oh, There's an Easter egg with the dart game. Kit could have been a fan favorite like Dave, but he made some poor choices. So yeah, exactly. Does that kitten plus Mel look similar? No, they look completely different. Um, the other kitten was like dark black and f like as floofy as you can get. Long hair, big floofy tail. They look very different. <laughs> is that just a cough or is it a banshee? It's a banshee. It's a banshee. And Demon Slayer, your earlier question. I haven't seen Merlin, but I've heard of it and it sounds really cool. Okay, we're going to do some difference detective.
Eh, okay. That. That. These are deceptively difficult puzzles. If you guys see any differences, let me know. Mm, I rob. This thing. This little moon. His moustache. Yeah, there's like three more differences. Okay, this. don't see any other differences. <laughs> hmm. And we only have 35 seconds left. There's gotta be one on the cat, right? The stripes? Okay, there's an extra stripe. Do you have an extra toe somewhere? No? Mustache on his face, the license plate. Which pick is your favorite? They're all so good. Oh no. Ah. See, this always happens to me. I always miss like one. Oh, there's a little crinkle on the car. Oh, I missed it. Darn. Highly recommend the Merlin TV show. It's great. Nice. Your friend who works in the film industry knows the actress who played Morgana? That's so cool. If you hit only bullseyes until you have one point, then purposely get zero. Until you have only one dart left and use that to get exactly zero, you get an Easter egg. Oh, that's cool. Your cat looks similar to Mel and lives a very spoiled life of comfy cushions and too many treats. We love that. You actually had the exact same feelings. You were really frustrated with your cat, the, hat che the hair chewer. Who was just not matching my vibe at all and I had a lot of resentment, but we grew together over time. Thanks for saying that, Sarah. It's actually really nice to hear that. Um, I always, I, I think about it a lot and I always feel really bad about it. So thank you for saying that. Greetings, Chloe. We are about halfway, I'd say, through the mystery. The one, the astronaut, is super good. Okay. So we have to get exactly zero. That's the idea. I hate how Nancy moves so much. Darn it. Darn it. <laughs> oh, okay. Come on, Nancy. Ow. Come on, Nancy. <laughs> there we go. Okay, 29. So if we can do 20 and 9. No! Oh, wait, okay, phew. That was close. 9. Okay, we got the doggy prize. Do we... I think we have to get the whistle from Difference Detective, don't we? I haven't watched Veronica Mars either. I'm so behind on TV shows. Anyone who loves Nancy Drew would adore it. I'll have to add that to the list. Your friend worked with Tom Felton? Oh my gosh, that's so cool, Demon Slayer. Nancy has a case of the mid wiggles and can't stop swaying. No kidding. She's just up on caffeine. You feel really bad about it, too. You got along with your other three cats, but always ended up rolling your eyes at bubbles. It continues to make me really upset to think about it. Yeah, it's just, like... I always go back to things that I wish I would have done differently in life. Just constantly focusing on them. Which isn't, you know... Everybody makes mistakes, and it's totally... Totally understandable, and... 
certain times of life are more stressful than other times. I mean, I was in college in my senior year, and there were a lot of changes happening in my life. But I always think about how horrible it felt. And how much I wish that hadn't been the case. But, you know, we live and we learn, I suppose. Okay. Where are there any changes? The dog ears. This dude's face. Oh, this thing. There's an extra on the fishing rod. Mmm... Hmm. No. Feathers? Feathers? Any different? I always have a hard time with this one. This boat one. I can never figure out for some reason. Pockets on his vest? Crinkles on his shirt? No. Oh, this thing. See, I always do this. I, I can get 11, but I can't get 12. The gear? The gear is different? What gear? Ah! <laughs> On the top. Darn it. The difference puzzles are hard enough without being timed. Exactly. The cloud on the far right is smooth on the one there's a squiggle in the other oh my gosh that's what it was oh you were right demon slayer and i missed it okay let's try this again you guys are helpful unfortunately the chat is ever so slightly delayed but i'm going to keep a closer eye on it you guys were totally right oh this is fun okay his hat the flower um the vase is different Paint, um, one of these crayons has to be different. The paintbrush, the rag, um, there's a clip there, there's this, it's the umbrella handle, her lace waist, the umbrella, her hat. Okay, two more. The flowers, his mustache. A oh, hole. Good catch. It's great to have more eyes. Glare in the window. The cloud behind the dog. Oh, no, wait. Flowers, his mustache. Line on bonnet. The window. Anything else about the window off? Ruffle on the skirt waist. Oh! <gasps> we did it! Yay! Thank you, fellow detectives. That was super helpful. We got a whistle. Now we can go catch sheep. Or attempt to catch sheep. We'll see how successful we are. <laughs> Here, sheepy, sheepy. Okay, how do you... How do we whistle? Do I just have to click on it? It's not like a keyboard shortcut for the whistling. Okay, so we have to get close enough to the sheep... Come back here. Come here. Come here. Stop moving. Okay. And it, there's a counter up in the corner that tells you how many sheep are left. We got one. I heard a bear. Oh, I heard one. Where are you? Hi, sheep. There you go. Okay, you go. And for the love of all that is holy, stay in the sheep shed. <laughs> sheep! Come back here. Here, sheepy. Here, sheepy, sheepy. Sheep! Hold still. Sheep. Be a good sheep and hold still. <laughs> Here, sheepy, sheepy. Here, sheepy, sheepy. Bah. If you use their language, they will be calm and come to me. 
Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> Sheep, where are you? Sheep? Hello? Aha! Go! Go! No! Hold still. Go to the sheep shed. Here, sheepy, sheepy. Here, sheepy, sheepy. You need to go to the shed so that I can give you really weird haircuts. I promise you'll love them. You'll look fabulous. Where are you? I hear you, but where are you? Where are you? <gasps> sheep! Hold still. Go to the sheep shed. <gasps> sheep, sheep. Go sheep, go. Okay, where are you? I heard one. I heard one. Here, sheepy, sheepy. <gasps> sheep! Go, go. Yes. <laughs> Where's the last one? Where are you, sheepy? Here, sheepy, sheepy, sheepy. Bang. Bang. <laughs> Gentle bear. Bang. Where are you? Come on, if I can't find you, your friends are going to start escaping. Where are you? <gasps> Sheep! Go! Yes, 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 yes! Lock the door, Nancy! <laughs> Lock the door! Yes, sheep! Yes! Oh! No, we don't need a specific tune, they just teleport. Eee, sheepy, sheepy! I hated the sheep puzzle, it almost took you so long. I totally know what you mean, Chloe. It can be very frustrating. I was the part that took the longest because you didn't really know what to do. Mm-hmm. It's kind of confusing. Her light circle is so small. Do the sheep go into Nancy's expendable charm bag? Caitlin, making sheep doors is what we all need during these hard times. Again, I am here to entertain. <laughs> oh, I love it. Sheep of makeovers, they can become Ireland's next top model. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Okay. Come in, sheep. I love the haircuts that you can give these sheep. It's so funny. How do I get him in? Come here. Here, sheep. Reset. Oh, there's a key. I need a key, don't I? There. The paddock's all locked up. Okay, the paddock's locked up. Do I use a key? I'm confused. Now do I whistle? There's a bag all hooked up. Why can't I remember how to do this? Nancy stinks at whistling. <laughs> oh, do we have to just give him back to Denal? Oh, uh, yeah, I gotta talk to Denal. Thanks, guys. Was watching your review for Ransom of the Seven Ships, and I totally agree with the scores you gave them out of 10, except you would have given characters a negative 2 out of 10. Yeah. That's fair. Oh, yeah. Stone Easter egg thing again. Mel in the background. My servant is becoming insane. She is making sheep sounds. Guess I will have to find a new peasant. <laughs> that was faster than you've ever done. That was actually faster than I usually do it, too. Okay, so we're gonna do Lugnasa and Autumn and Leo. That's what it is. Which you can only do if you've seen the sheep doll you need to stuff. Yes, I have seen the sheep doll. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's working for Eddie Lambda. I don't know why. We'll go talk to Denal. 
Time to give the sheep weird here haircuts. Exactly. It's pronounced Denal, mind you. There's no D at the end. Time to look this silly thing up. <laughs> Thank you, Friday Lambda. The sheep are tucked away in the barn, then? They sure are. I knew you could do it, lass. Will you be wanting something else from me, then? I'd better get going. Fine with me. I want to shear the sheep, Denal. Ugh. Did I not look at the sheep doll? I swear I looked at the sheep doll. Nancy didn't say anything, though. Negative one for characters in Ransom. Yeah, I mean, honestly, what kind of mystery game has one suspect? And in lieu of suspects, gives me a really annoying parrot and really annoying monkeys. The video game gods are showing Caitlin mercy on the sheep after the terrible scopa. Exactly. We deserve this. We deserve an easy sheep puzzle. Why can't I look at the sheep? I swear. Hmm. Did you look at the empty wool box? I thought it's not letting me. You mean Cuckoo and the Cheating Monkeys? Those aren't characters. I fully agree. Yeah, it's not letting me look at the wool box. Do I need to do the other dollhouse puzzle before that, maybe? Ransom didn't even have any choice of culprits. Mm-hmm. Characters in Midnight Salem, we can't be ungrateful for around 10 characters. Because in Ransom, we get Bess, George, one suspect, a parrot, and monkeys. This is true. Oops. Although a lot of the characters in Midnight in Salem weren't actual options for the culprit, unfortunately. Okay, now you have the solution. That's good. How did her do such a great job with Lulu and fail so terribly with Cuckoo? That's such a good question. I don't know why Lulu is not annoying and Cuckoo is like one of the most frustrating animals on this planet. Okay. Cow next to man. Pig next to chandelier. And the knight. Hmm. The dog needs to be next to a knight. And the man needs to be directly above the dog. And the cow needs to be directly next to the man. The woman needs to be on the lower level and the cat needs to be up. Mm, and the lady needs to be down here somewhere. And the girl needs to be left with the cat. How's that? Not quite. How about if we do this? Okay. Girl is above the... Cow is next to the man. Cat. Cow. Lady. The cat needs to be to the right. That looks right. Pig is directly there. Dog is directly to the left of a soldier. Or somewhere to the left of the soldier. There we go. Okay. But that didn't help. Yes, we get to play Waverly soon. I'm so pumped. George does deserve a good redesign. Turn the dials to the solution for winter. Scorpio, winter, and Samhain. Then you turn all three stones four times each. Try that. Okay. I will try that. Do we need to solve the ruins puzzle? You have a lead? 
I'm gonna go play detective now. Keep me posted. Ray Marie, I would say that um, the culprit for Stay Tuned for Danger scared me the most because you can very clearly tell that they are like totally insane. They are totally off their rocker. Very scary. Need to solve the gears puzzle in the library. Oh. I think I have. Both of the gears. Okay. Gears puzzle. Give George a pixie cut. She kind of had a pixie cut, didn't she? In some other games. But I do agree that that's a good look for her. She can totally rock short hair. I love this music lots. <laughs> if we put hmm, a short one here, maybe. And this long one can still go here. And a short one here. Okay, that's good. I want about. Hmm. That maybe. And that. And then we could go that. Go play detective. Sure, Nancy, it's totally a game and you haven't actually solved anything ever before. Exactly. Do you use the whistle when you're at the shearing machine to call a sheep into it? I think so. That gives you the sheet that tells you, hey, I need a sheep doll. Oh, got it. Got it. How does that not work? I call bull hunky on that because that totally looks like it fits. Mm. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Reminds you of Deception Island music? For sure, I could see that. Can you imagine having a mystery based in the circus and she has to do juggling and tightrope walking? That'd be so funny. Okay, what actually fits up here? That fits, that fits, that fits. Okay, what if we put it here? None of that fits. What if we put it here? Then does it fit? Sort of. That fits, right? And then maybe... Hmm. Because I gotta figure out how to get them all to fit. Oh yeah, we could totally do trivia like we did last time. That was super fun. The gears sound like the pipes. Thanks, Chloe. One consecutive line from bottom left to top right using all the gears. Hmm.
bottom left to top right. How about something like this? No? Come on, game, work with me here. <laughs> Hmm. Forgot half of what I asked last time, but here we go. <laughs> Which Nancy Drew game do you think is the scariest? Remember playing Curse of Blackmore and being terrified? Totally. <clears throat> I would say, um... I do think Ghost of Thornton Hall is the scariest overall, but Shadow at the Water's Edge has the, um the scariest individual moment of any game. But I still think Ghost of Thornton Hall overall has more scare to it. How many windows are on the front of Wickford Castle? Demon Slayer says 21. That sounds right. Why is this so hard? What? <laughs> um. Do 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 do. There we go. Now we got it. Mid is the scariest because of the terrible animations and Deirdre jump scares. That's the technically impossible question, right? Okay, so now Nancy can go in here and be like, hey, I want to do this puzzle, but I don't have a sheep. So I can't do this puzzle. I better go get a sheep. Put two and two together earlier, Nancy. The police officer in Alibi and Ashes. Yeah, Detective Ryan and Chief McGinnis. Right? Water's Edge loses its scare factor when you see Yumi. Maybe because you play the newer games as a teen and adult, you don't really experience the fear factors intensely as the older games which you played at a younger age. I totally get that. Um, I remember Curse of Blackmore Manor being terrified for me when I was a kid, and Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake, even worse. Like, Ghost Dogs for me as a kid was so scary, which is part of why I love it so much now as an adult. The solution is 15. You're supposed to count the windows on your game cover? What? <laughs> no way. That sheep doll needs stuffing. To stuff that sheep doll, I'm going to need more wool. No way, Nancy. No way. Yo, I'm still scared of ghost dogs. Same. That's why Argyle complained about it during his review. Well, that seems fair. Okay, so now I have to go ask Denal. Nancy can't just go shear them. I guess I have to have permission before I randomly start shearing sheep. I suppose that makes sense. Here we go. Gotta get rid of a notification quick. Burp. There we go. The ghost dogs just made you smile. 
Love those cute puppers. What's on your mind, then? Since you're going to shear the sheep that are in the barn tomorrow anyway, would it be okay if I sheared one of them tonight? You know how to shear a sheep, do you? Well, no, but I need some raw wool, and I figure it can't be that hard. I'm willing to let you give it a try, but you'll not be finished till you've filled three bags. Do I have your word on it? Three bags of wool. You got it. All right, then. The book there in the barn will tell you how to operate all the equipment. Oh, and to get a sheep into the shearing station, just blow this tune on your whistle. <laughs> Read the instructions, blow the whistle, and you'll be adding sheep shearing to your list of talents in no time at all. Same, Sarah. I can't remember one of the desserts. But aren't there ribs with creature sauce? I remember that. Oh my gosh, Luna, I did the exact same thing. Literally counted every single window in the actual building. You know, like the game tells you to do. <laughs> and then it was wrong. So frustrating. Thankfully, you can ch change your question if you get that one. Which I also didn't know until... Like, the tenth time I'd play that game. Ooh, what college does Ned go to? Isn't it like Emerson University? Shearing sheep is actually an art. If you do it wrong, you can cut the sheep and those wounds can cause infections and problems in the future. Oh, poor sheep. Okay. So, this is a Quinn. He's green. And I would say that he is... What, what is that emotion? He's not calm. I think he's bleeding. Is he bleating? 15? Or are those other sheep? Or is he panicked? He could be panicked. So 22 plus 16 would be 38. 40? Hopefully. The sheep shearing device is insane. Elvis, the sheep. I couldn't progress because of this question and actually never finished the game. New sheep. Oh, he's scared. Poor sheep. Okay, so this one's also panicked. And it's a blue burn. So 9 plus 23 gets us 32. Plus 16. 32 plus 16 is 48. Togo! The scariest shearing machine ever, right? Kate's theme! So confusing with the arbitrary emotions for the sheep. That looks like my hair having gone a couple months without a cut. <laughs> right? How's everyone's hair doing? I'm still living my top bun life. Why won't a sheep come to me? Oh, because I- One bag down, two bags to go. Because I had to get the wool. Come here, sheep. I know, I feel so bad for the sheep. How old was Nancy when her mom dies? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know. Oh, he looks angry. That's a mad sheep. Green Quinn. 24. 37. That's an angry sheep. Hee <laughs> <laughs> hee. Mohawk. See, they come in willingly, so that's good at least. The, oh, this one's angry too. An angry daily. Green, 19, 21. 21 plus 13, 34. Silence by it says 10. Yeah, I think she's 10 in the games. In the books, it's different. 
Your hair is so much healthier because you're not washing or drying it so much. I think it grew like five inches. Wow. Well, that's actually nice, Luna. That's great. That's two bags. I promised Mr. Delaney I'd fill three. Hee, sheepy, sheepy. Come on in. Okay. Oh, it's so cute. It's happy. It's a happy sheep. Yellow and daily is 26. 26 plus 12, 38. I want the really poofy one. This machine looks like something out of a crazy alien sci-fi movie. It probably is. <laughs> I don't know how Denal got it. Not gonna ask too many questions about Denal and his um, illicit sheep shearing trade. Jane's favorite game to play with Nancy. Buell. And she's too good at it, too. Quinn. Blue, 31. 31 plus 16, 47. Give me the poofy style. We want the poofy style. Light of our love, Maria. Yes! Yes, that's the one I like. That's my favorite. Bow sheep. <laughs> Floofy bow sheep. Love it. There. All done. Okay. We got a handful of wool. And we did three bags. So now we can go make the sheep. Wonderful. Nancy's resume must be so strange. Sheep shearing skills. Expert sheep shearer. She would ace any situational questions. This is so true. Little bow sheep. Little bow peep. <laughs> she put a bow on Lady Mel. I love that idea, Demon Slayer. She would hate it. <laughs> She'd be so mad at me and be so funny. <laughs> uh, I love it. Sheep. And now we go back to the castle. Where did Joseph's brother die? Greenwood, Arizona? I think. Annoying cats on my resume. <laughs> yes. Oh, a resume for Nancy would be so fun to make. I love that What's idea. I found out that Mr. Delaney is the one who hid Matt's luggage. Why would he do that? Apparently, he was adamant that Matt not stay in the nursery. So he removed all of Matt's things and hid them down here, thinking it would force Matt out. That was the day Matt disappeared. Stubborn old loon. Well, then I guess that just proves this really is all just one big inane practical joke. Matt vanished, thinking we'd find his luggage in the nursery. Unless Denal is lying, and he hid the luggage for some other reason. For crying out loud, Nancy, find Matt before this mystery drives us all loony. I'll see you later, okay? Keep it real. Find Matt before this mystery drives us all loony. I should open up your own detective agency. My own detective agency. Love that. Unfortunately, I'm a huge chicken. So in real life, I don't think I would be able to actually solve any mysteries because I'd be too scared. Okay, let's see here. This is the third dollhouse. I think the dog goes there. Lady. And a sheep. And a man. And a pig. Is that supposed to be Nancy or Kyler? I'm never positive about that. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, there we go. Okay, do, how many of the things do we have now? We have one, two, three of them. But we can now go out to the stone pillars and solve that puzzle. Maya win! Things in real life, I have a feeling Nancy would have a criminal record a mile long. That's so true. I think it's Kyler. Yeah, that would make sense, Maria. The wind just blew your door open, literal garbage? Oh my gosh. That's terrifying. Oop. That was scary. Um, yeah. Can you put the Easter egg thing in the chat again? So it was, we were supposed to do the solution for winter, which would be Samane. And I think this is the solution for winter. And then I turn them all four times. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It didn't work. <laughs> Arson charges don't go off that easy. Um. Hmm. Well. I know this one is supposed to be... You can use the stars to determine which one each one is supposed to be. And this is supposed to be this one. And there's that. And then... May, summer? So the tree would be full of leaves. So that if this is summer. Hmm. It just isn't playing nice. This is true. It didn't work Friday Lambda. <laughs> But I think if we do, okay. And this one I think is Leo. The leaves falling. And this one I think is supposed to be the winter solution. This one is supposed to be... That one... Spring... And Imbolc. There we go! Hey hey! Yeah, Mel's a legacy. Maybe Banshee just needs a throat lozenge. <laughs> That's probably true. She just needs a cough drop. I don't know why it's not working either, Friday Lambda. It's weird. Just checking. Is Samane the one with one line on the right side of the bottom right? Samane is this one. And then it would be winter. And then... That. That's the Samane. That's like the winter solution. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, you have to do it after. There we go. We have to do it afterwards. What does Deirdre order when on a date with Ned? Oh my gosh, I can't remember. Doesn't she just get, like, a water or something? <laughs> I can't remember. 
Are there any mysterious cases or ghost stories in your area? That's a good question. Um, there is a cool ghost story in St. Paul, Minnesota. It actually used to be a pretty big hub for gangsters back in the day. Um, so uh, there's this restaurant that was built into the caves in St. Paul um, that used to be a pretty big hangout for gangsters, and it's reputedly very haunted still to this day, which is super freaky. And Duluth, Minnesota, um, has this really beautiful estate that somebody was um, murdered in. And that place is definitely reputed to be haunted as well. Okay. So. I want to put... Okay, which one is this? Zero one, zero zero one one. This one I think is yellow. Press, put that there. And then this one is cyan. How is Nancy turning these heavy rocks? Nancy is strong. This one is magenta. That explains why didn't Argyle say so? Argyle thump. Samain is actually pronounced Sawen and is one of the origins for Halloween. Oh, that's so cool. Now we have instructions for a jetpack. <laughs> you know, super normal things. Is red lobster a big thing in Minnesota? I remember visiting while on a road trip and I saw a ton of red lobster restaurants and each was packed full in Canada. We barely have any left. They're pretty common. I definitely think there's quite a few in the area, and I love Red Lobster so much. So good. The super rich area near you is full of huge mansions. There's a lot of bootlegging and tunnels that run under houses. That's cool. That's super cool. Uh, do I have these instructions? I do. Okay, good. I have them written down. Okay. Jetpack time. Yellow dial to red triangle. Numbers to 729. Black button. Red switch down. Blue dial to black triangle. <clears throat> Lever up halfway. Yellow button red button this becomes red number dial to four the blue switch up yellow switch down go oh my gosh i'm flying fly nancy fly Nancy can fly! What was one of the wacky dishes that Clara planned for her daughter's wedding in Thornton Hall? Oh my gosh, that wedding menu was hysterical. Matt, are you in here? Hello? Anybody here? Highcroft Manor in Vancouver. Gorgeous mansion, one of the most haunted areas in the city. That's so cool! Okay, so we gotta go look at all these books. That bed is insane, and it's crazy that it's not more dusty up here. Mm 
Babog. Crazy that she added these other names on there. Fiona, Caitlin O'Brien, Brendan Malloy. This is the on this is the closest thing I've had to having my name in the games, but it's spelled wrong. It's got an I instead of a Y. But there's about 50 different ways that one can spell Caitlin, so you know. It's kind of funny how they don't just give you Easter eggs in this one. You have to like work for it. Because <laughs> that's another one that you can get an Easter egg for. Okay, so let's go look at the books in the library. Cucumber sandwiches are actually super good. But I think those are on the menu. Someone asked some really tricky trivia questions. White pepper ice cream and brioche with pudding. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. The quail, egg, and caviar over scallops with mousseline. Oh, that sounds good, too. What are the names of Nancy's closest relatives? Ooh, that's a tough question, actually. And there's still a dartboard. Yeah, so those are all three of the Easter eggs. I think the dollhouse one might be the easiest one to get. So that might be the one that I do. Okay, books, books, books. So these books are gonna give us hints. Hydroponics and aeroponics growing without soil but eggy culture. Three years into the study by removing all duplicates, I find that the only remaining true consonant is key. So if you take the name and you have the only remaining true consonant, Let's see. Do I have this written down? Please tell me I have this written down. Okay, yeah, I have this written down, good. And then over here, not that. Another book, Ursat's Quidnunks, A Guide to Knowledge. And then if you follow all of these um, instructions, Ursat's Quidnunx becomes spun to Q will do. And that's the second book on the list. So the first one got us, um, this one got us Q. This one got us hydroponics and aeroponics. Got us, <clears throat> can't remember, but I have it written down. Nautical cartography. Oh yeah, on Eloise, doy. <laughs> to our dear friend, one year you'll finally join us here. One year soon you'll finally join us here. The seas await your notice. The seas. One year soon. Okay, so that's what it is. One and then the seas. So one is C. Two is Q. Isn't there a book over here? Yeah, there it is. Zoopraxiscope, Animals in Motion. Animals abound in a merry round. Seated in the middle can answer the riddle. On legs of four, they spin evermore. So the fourth is the letter in the middle, which ends up being X. And I think those are all of them. And then we need to fly out to this area on our jetpack. So out we go. Is Hannah just housekeeper? Yeah, I don't think Hannah is actually related to them. But she basically has become like a pseudo-mom for Nancy. I was wrong my entire life. Ooh! Okay. Ah! Okay. Ooh, yeah, the code names. Hannah is so obscure. Justice for Hannah. We need more Hannah. Okay, so here we are, and we basically fly straight out. Oh no! I'm out of power! <laughs> Oops! At least you were above water when you ran out of fuel. 
falling into a body of water from any height above 150 feet is like falling onto concrete. Don't. Oh, my goodness. Speaking of which, I haven't saved once. N5. Logan! The mysterious assistant who apparently was passing information on us to the spies in Silent Spy. How dare he. Okay, so one is C, two is Q, three is L, four is X, and five is N. Waverly Academy for girls, so Caitlin went to I think this doll is supposed to be me. Waverly, which I love. There's a Nancy. This really sad um, journal entry. Despite my reservations, Brendan built and gave to Fiona her very own jetpack. Her constant, often tearful pleas for permission to use his had simply become intolerable. Brendan said it would help teach her responsibility, and I must admit the, lack of pure, the look of pure joy on her face when he presented her with it, and her spontaneous, utterly sincere promise to use it carefully forever and ever, have convinced me it was a good idea. Besides, Brendan's work keeps us all so isolated here, it breaks my heart to think how lonely and bored she must be. But now she's everywhere, circling the castle, soaring over the bog, venturing out to the islands and back. And since Brendan is harder at work than ever on his liquid propellants, it falls upon me to don his jetpack and keep an eye on her whenever it appears she's getting too adventuresome. Brendan has made my job somewhat easier by fitting Fiona's jetpack with a device that causes it to automatically descend should she try to fly beyond the borders of the castle toward town. The fireworks inadvertently caused by Brendan's test launches have already created enough stir in town. Were someone to see Fiona arcing across the skies of Baylor, that would be the end of our happy life here for sure. Fortunately, working at the inn as I do almost nightly, I hear all the rumors and manage to nip those concealing concerning castle malloy in the bud by attributing the strange flickering lights some people swear they've seen up here to the activities of fairies which to many if not most of our neighbors is a perfectly reasonable explanation not that i'm complaining mind you brendan has managed to fool everyone into thinking he's developing a new fuel for armored vehicles in fact he sometimes conducts tours of the false laboratory he maintains next to the library in order to support his subterfuge if the truth of what he's developing in the real lab were ever discovered I shudder to think of the consequences. Oh dear, Fiona just shot by outside the window. Time to brave the jetpack and go see what she's up to. So the idea is that Fiona didn't die because she was using her jetpack um, at the time of the explosion, which is so sad. So incredibly sad. Animals in Motion is actually a real book. That's so funny. You guys are so good at this trivia stuff. Okay. We have this key now to this box. Happy sixth birthday to a darling daughter. Dear Fiona, you are the light of our life. Our deepest love to you always. Happy birthday, sweetheart. Uh. Oh my gosh. Listen, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be in here. This is your home, isn't it? My name's Nancy Drew, and you're... you're Fiona, right? Fiona Malloy? Uh. Fiona, listen. I didn't mean any harm. See, mm. I'm looking for someone. A young man named Matt. I don't suppose you've seen him. Fiona? <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> pushes Nancy down a hole. Mm. 
Also, it implies her mother caused the explosion since that was her first time using the thing. <gasps> Sad. Oh, I bet you're right. Like the fire sparked gas or something? Oh my gosh, sad. No, don't touch that. No! Not. Well, now you're trapped over there and I'm trapped over here. Now I'm done. I take it you're Matt. I'm Nancy Drew, the maid of honor. Thrilled, I'm sure. You wouldn't happen to have a tunnel boring machine in your pocket, would you? Or food? Do you have any food on you? A biscuit or two? Some crisps? Coca Kringle? Anything? <sighs> Sorry. Oh, the only thing that woman in the shabby dress ever gives me are carrots and potatoes and such. I've been wandering around down here for days. I want something full of sugar and nice, greasy fat. You know, real food. Hi, Marie Marie. We are trapped. <laughs> she feeds you? Every once in a while, the silo slides open, and she'll be standing up there in the fresh air, looking down at me. Then I get showered with vegetables, she goes away, and the silo slides shut. Whenever I talk to her, she kind of grunts as if she understands what I'm saying, yet she refuses to help me. It's like I'm her pet or something. And now there's two of us. Dibs on the potatoes. Why did this door shut when I pulled that switch? As best I can figure from the papers and drawings I've found, you're standing in the laboratory where the bloke who lived here during World War II did all his top secret research. He was working on new forms of propulsion to be used in flying machines, rockets, that sort of thing. Apparently, to keep unwanted visitors out, he planted devices which would allow him, at the push of a button, to seal off the lab. This gate and all the others will go up when our hostess decides to feed us. Opening those silo doors seems to reset everything. Opening those silo doors is also the only way out of here. Believe me, I know. We're getting there, Juan Pena, but we still have one of the most difficult puzzles left. Kyler and Kit think you disappeared as a practical joke. A reasonable assumption. Pulling the wool over people's eyes while pulling the rug out from under them is something I take great pleasure in. I don't know why, I just do. And actually, they are, in a way, quite correct. In point of fact, I stumbled upon the entrance to a secret passage in the nursery, so I thought it would be jolly good fun to make some ghostly sorts of noise from inside it and give Kyler a fright. But all of a sudden, this crow flew in through the window and came straight at my eyes. I fell backwards into the passage, trying to get away from it, and the next thing I knew, I was falling through a hole in the floor. Fortunately, I only fell about two meters. So I got to my feet, and since it was dark and my glasses were knocked off when that crow attacked me, I started feeling my way along the wall, looking for a ladder or something, so I could climb back up. But instead, my hand hit some sort of button. A siren went off, the door above me slid shut, and there I was. I yelled until I was hoarse, but no use. I was trapped. So I felt my way along the tunnel, looking for another way out, until I got to the lab you're standing in. At which point, I blundered into the button you just pressed, siren goes off, door comes down, and suddenly I'm even more trapped. Not long after that, the doors at the top of the silo slid open. So I looked up, and by squinting really hard, I could see an old woman with long hair, wearing a long ratty dress, just standing there, looking down at me. I called to her, told her who I was and what had happened. I told her everything called at her till I went hoarse again, but she just stood there. I even tossed my ring up to her, saying, go ahead, keep it, just get me the heck out of here. Nothing. Kyler's trying her best not to show it, but she's really worried about you. That's the worst of it. Knowing that my eagerness to play a silly prank on her is going to wind up ruining the wedding. She's going to be so disappointed and humiliated and appalled. She'll never forgive me. What an idiot I am. I love her so much, and I am so lucky a mongrel like me landing someone as smart and beautiful as her, and now, whether I ever get out of here or not, I'm going to lose her. What an unthinking, short-sighted, immature idiot. For a while, Kit was convinced you disappeared because you had decided you didn't want to marry Kyler after all. I'm not surprised. The fact is, soon after we got here, he tried to tell me I was about to make a colossal mistake and that I should call off the wedding. 
such wishful thinking on his part is exactly why I didn't ask him to be my best man. Oh, I made up some excuse about office politics and occupational expediency, but Kit was, and is, and hopefully always will be, my best friend. But having him be my best man, knowing he's still smitten with Kyla, I figured I'd pass. Mr. Delaney, the caretaker? He thinks you were spirited away by fairies. <laughs> you know, I actually missed that superstitious, super ridiculous old fossil. Kit and I spent the better part of an evening rigging line in the garden so we could fool him into thinking a leprechaun was moving through the bushes. Only a branch snapped off and whacked Kit in the eye, and that was that. Except, I must admit, seeing as I have no idea who or what that thing is that has us back down here, Mr. Delaney might not be all that wrong. I'm pretty sure her name's Fiona. She's the daughter of Brendan Malloy, the guy who was doing all the research down here. Everyone thought she was killed along with her parents when this place exploded. But she wasn't, and she's been wandering around in the bog near the castle ever since. So, if our wedding ever does take place, it looks like I'll end up with a crazy in-law after all. I'm going to look around some more. You do that. <laughs> That's a positive spin on the situation, Matt. Okay, so we are in the secret laboratory. And that is a rocket. <laughs> Which we need to get functioning if we have any hope of escaping. Very creepy drawings. Ooh, I would say I would rank them from favorite to least favorite. I would say final scene, alibi and ashes, danger by design, captive curse, and shattered medallion. Um, we need these ones. And we need to fix these. It's like a tangram puzzle. So how did everyone get disintegrated? It sounds like what happened is that um, Fiona's mom, Caitlin Malloy, turned on her jetpack and it caused the explosion, um, probably because his laboratory was pretty, uh, I would say, dangerous. Like, it was probably filled with fumes and everything. I'm going to put that on. And Fiona was spared because she was out flying around on her jetpack. Oh boy. Ah, uh, usually I take the time to figure this one out, but this is rough. Um... Two to blue, wire three to orange, wire four to yellow, wire five to green. Okay. Yeah, a few, quite a few people found the final scene boring. And I totally get it. It was my first game, so I definitely have nostalgia um, playing a role for me. But I, there's a lot of phone calls. Some people don't like the characters. I'm just really compelled by the plot. And I think the... I really enjoyed the characters, actually. Did you know there was a button here that says, In case of lockdown, press to open? What? You mean something that could open up a way to escape was right under my nose the whole time? That does it. If I get out of here, I'm having that eye surgery. My weak stomach will just have to get over it. Hi, Amanda. You're just in time for the chemicals puzzle. You lucky duck. Can you name all the animals Nancy came across in the games and what they are specifically? Ooh, I like that. Rocket notes. 
So this basically tells us the wires that need to go together. Type one fin is the only successful one. Tests have concluded that only fin type one is successful. Yeah, okay, I did get the right ones. Fake pets count. Okay. Okay, you guys. <laughs> Get comfortable. We're gonna be here for a little while. Yeah, Bob the horse and Clyde and Ace. Cuckoo and Lulu the parrots. Monkeys and Ransom of the Seven Ships. <laughs> Ransom of the Seven Ships. <laughs> Ransom of the Seven Ships. The ghost dogs. Isis. There's Bernie. Bernie the gator. Can't forget Bernie. Casper the squirrel. Okay. I didn't try to do that. It was literally just the first chemical and I blew us up. <laughs> oh my god. The explosion puzzle is right, Danny. Oh my goodness. How long does it usually take you to do the chemicals puzzle, Caitlin? Well, apparently longer than it should. <laughs> oh my god. That was hilarious. Okay. This puzzle is just nuts. Okay, water, H2O. H2O goes in category two, but we can't do that. Hydrogen is category one. Suki! Miles the Magnificent Memory Machine. Does he count as an animal? There's a pencil in Renata's bag. Okay, <clears throat> iodine is in category two. Which if we do very carefully. I'm also going to save a bunch. So that if I do blow up, we don't have to... I don't think you have to start over, though, if you do blow up. Lilac in was cat. Nice lady. That's true. Hydrogen is category one. Mercury. Where does mercury go? Mercury is category three. So I can't get rid of that mercury for a while. The phosphorus goes in category one. Uh. Dang it. <laughs> it can be pretty time consuming for some people. I think it takes me, I don't know, like honestly maybe half an hour of actual game time to finish. Fun fact, this puzzle is so hard, there is no difference between junior and senior mode. <laughs> this puzzle drives me nuts. It's just very time consuming. And I apparently suck at getting it. Okay. Hydrogen, if we do this. Thankfully it doesn't make you start all the way over if you explode. Then it would be really impossible.
Ooh, are we talking about the food in Icicle Creek? Now I'm so hungry. This puzzle's just reminding me that I have my AP Chem exam on Thursday. Oh, Grace, I'm sorry. That sounds rough. Okay. See, the bromine is in category three. And this is in category one. If I can safely get this. Are you? Now I'm hungry because of food topic. It's not you, Caitlin. This puzzle really sucks. It does. Uh, I'm hungry now because of food topic, too. Oh my goodness. This game. This puzzle. I like the game. The puzzle is a little bit frustrating. Okay. You can go all the way over here in category one. Which is worse, this puzzle or fox and geese? That's a tough race. Um, I still feel like fox and geese because at least I only have to do this once and it's like every part of it is different whereas fox and geese is literally the same difficult puzzle four different times or three different times. It could be a toss-up, to be honest. The food puzzles and the food in Icicle Creek is the best in the series. I love the cooking puzzle in White Wolf of Icicle Creek. In my own, like, free game time, I do it even after Ollie is like, don't worry, I'll still do the cooking. I'm like, no, Ollie, the cooking is my job. <laughs> Okay, now this is take this takes some delicacy cuz this mercury needs to go up to category 3. You're doing great, Caitlin. The chemicals are just being stupid. Thanks for the support, guys. Okay, delicate, delicate work here. Drop the mercury. Okay. Phosphorus goes in category one. Greetings, Casey! Joining the party late, but I'm here to watch the ending. You came at the most exciting part where you get to watch the chemicals explode multiple times. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Thanks so much for joining in. Um, Radon is in category three. Okay. Some of these you don't technically need to do. Because we just need to get this key out of the way. But it definitely feels easier to get a lot of them out of the way. Where does this bromine go? Bromine is in category three. Okay. Got bromine. Phosphorus goes to one. What is the least used ingredient in the ice cream puzzle in Danger by Design? Is it like the tapioca balls? That would be my guess. LOX. Where does that go? That's category two. Liquid oxygen. What food does Nancy have to order in order to be able to grease the lock? Uncle Fred and Johnny Rudder. 
Vanilla ice cream was only used once in one parfait? But that's like the best ingredient. Um, potassium category one. Get this out of my way. I finally found a brand of Greek yogurt that I like, and I'm super picky about Greek yogurt because it always tastes too sour to me, but I finally found one I like, and I'm really pleased by it. Mercury category three. I have to do these so I can get the bromine out of the way. And this iodine is kind of bothering me. It's category two. What does Nancy have to use as a substitute when making the cookies? Um, she has to substitute brown sugar for molasses or molasses for brown sugar Ugh, this bromine it's too big to be able to get without like knocking things over okay so the water is in category two what kind of greek yogurt is it it's this company called too good um, cause it only has two grams of sugar in it, which I think has been the issue I've had with a lot of Greek yogurts before is that they take out too much fat and then they add in too much sugar. So it, it's only got two grams of sugar, which is nice for me. And I have, get it in the vanilla flavor and it's been so good. Too good. With the word too spelled out like the number. 50 drumsticks. Good old Hotchkiss. What goddess is on the mural in the upper part of Tomb of the Last Queen? Potassium is category one. Why would he make it so hard to get out of his own lab? So time consuming. <laughs> Chlorine, category two. Oh yeah, I'm definitely using my arrow keys. Potassium goes to one. Does she describe it as like metallic y or something like that? Or metal y or something? You're welcome, Sarah. I'm very picky about my Greek yogurt. <laughs> this puzzle would be even worse if you had to do the arrows. It so would be worse. It's already pretty rough. Okay, bromine goes to category three. What's the difference between regular yogurt and Greek yogurt? I don't eat either. I am not positive what the difference is, actually. I think one is supposed to have more pri probiotics. Like, I think Greek yogurt is supposed to have more probiotics in it in general, but I'm actually not positive what the real difference is. Greek yogurt is marketed as being, like, the healthier option, but I have no idea if that's actually true. It very well could just be how it's marketed. Almost there. We're sending you positive gain vibes. Is Queen Mel watching over me? Kind of. Mel, come help. She just licked her lips and is like, no. 
Well, fine then. Don't help. <laughs> Chlorine goes to category two. And the key. Does the key explode if I squeeze it too hard? Oh, I exploded like three times, Danny. <laughs> but then I got into the groove and things were getting a little bit better. Okay. So we put in the key. It's supposed to be at 90.1. But then... I don't know if it's going to work. Oh. oh, it worked! We did it! She's like, no, you solve your own puzzle. <laughs> Whoa! Why are you guys chatting in the garden? Yogurt and honey started with granola. Oh, yes. I found a new granola I really like, too. Granola and Greek yogurt. What on earth is going on? Matt! Kyla, we're trapped down here. Get a ladder or something. Oh, Matt, I've been so worried about you. Where have you been? I missed you so much. I was afraid I'd never see you again. And I've got so much to tell you. No, I take that back. There's only one thing I want to tell you. I love you. Do you hear me? I love you. By the time Kit came back with a ladder, Kyler had said I love you to Matt approximately 150 times. And Matt had said it to Kyler about 200 times. And they were still saying it to each other on the day of their wedding four days later. Even Kit remarked that Matt's little misadventure seemed to have been good for their relationship. Needless to say, this bummed Kit out. Until he met the very beautiful young Irish woman who catered the reception. Long story short, it looks like Kit will soon be returning to Ireland, and not just to sketch plans for potential housing developments. As for Mr. Delaney, he still can't accept the fact that the strange wail I kept hearing wasn't a banshee, but an old siren that Matt kept inadvertently setting off down in the tunnels. Nor is he clear on the fact that Fiona, whose jetpack was also a source of weird noises, was responsible for many of the strange phenomena he'd always attributed to fairies. But he understood immediately that Fiona was someone in need of compassion and helped the police take her into custody without incident. Apparently, after the explosion killed her parents, Fiona was taken in and raised by an old hermit who lived alone in the bog hut, which did not exactly do wonders for the little girl's mental or emotional development. But she's getting lots of attention now, and she's so bright, after all, her father was a rocket scientist, that her prognosis is actually pretty good. Me, I'm on my way back to the States, via jet plane, not jet pack. My pack and Fiona's were quickly confiscated by military types, bent on adapting them for use on the battlefield. Unfortunately for them, Brendan's intricate fuel system has them completely and hopelessly stumped, which has no doubt made Fiona's crow and all its feathered friends very happy. They finally have the skies above Castle Malloy all to themselves. Aw, happy crows. Kit is so sad. The Photoshop. Fiona's dress is actually really pretty under the dirt. That's true. Ah, it's the name of Fiona's mother. My name. But spelled wrong. Oh, and I totally forgot to go back and get the Easter egg, so we got, like, nothing done. Oops. <laughs> when my best friend, Bess Marvin, wins a vacation for three at a resort on a private island in the Bahamas, she naturally invites me and her cousin, George Bain, to go with her. But by the time I arrive, the owners of the resort are nowhere to be found, and Bess has been kidnapped. To get her back, George and I must find a long-lost treasure, a quest that brings us face-to-face -face with many of the island's strange inhabitants and forces us to risk our lives, both on and in the sea. Help us find the treasure before this sun-drenched paradise turns deadly. In my next adventure... Ransom of the Seven Ships. Face to face with some of the island's strange inhabitants, eh? And by that, do you mean the monkeys? And the parrot? <laughs> Good question, Juan Pena. We really don't know. 
Yeah, we'll wait till the end of the credits so we can see some bloopers. Good old Ransom of the Seven Ships. Are you guys excited? <laughs> I'll be there to help with the puzzles, Caitlin. Thank you, Chloe. This is good. I'm gonna need help. It's not bad if you like puzzles. This is true. Like, if you're into the Nancy Drew games purely for puzzles, like, this is a good game. Ransom of the Seven Ships is a good one for you. More golf cart rides and endless sailing. Trick for beating the key puzzle at the end of the game in mere seconds. Ooh, nice. Well, that's good. Just a bit too puzzle heavy. I happen to agree. Oh no, Ransom of the Seven Ships. Despite it being a bad game, Caitlin's livestream will make it great. Thanks, Ray Marie. I'll have a lot of fun being playfully upset at it. I don't know if you'll be able to make the stream on Friday, but hopefully. Yeah, I, I hope you guys can make it too, but ob obviously understand if you guys have things that you need to be doing. But we will plan on streaming Ransom of the Seven Ships on Friday and then my absolute favorite game in the world on Sunday, Warnings at Waverly Academy. Worst puzzle is the hourglasses at the end. The monkeys are tedious, but not impossible, except for the board game monkey. The board game monkey is the one that upsets me. Hate Ransom mildly, but kind of excited. Yay! <laughs> Plans for the rest of the day, Luna? I'm going to make some origami hearts for um, my mom and for my mother-in-law, future mother-in-law, to show them on Zoom for our Mother's Day chats. Oh yeah, we won't forget the Mel's. The Mel pick. Take one. Speed. Action! Oops. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Take three. Speed. Action. Oh, my depth perception stinks. Let me try it again. Oh, come on, guys, let me open the box. I gotta know what's in there. Please let me open it. Please. Please, 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 please. Oh, surprise! P it's a pigeon! Surprise! <laughs> right, Ray Marie, I can't believe that um, Waverly Academy is wedged between two of my least favorite games. Like, it's sitting right between Ransom of the Seven Ships and Trail of the Twister. Uh, sandwiches and high tea with your mom. That's gonna be so amazing, Demon Slayer. That sounds so great. It's a little cold, so I, I don't know. I should probably still go on my walk, because I try to go on a walk every day just to say stay stretched but i'll probably do some yoga too make some dinner bloopers in the game like tomb of the last queen show some more jokey bloopers and some actual errors they found for playtesting see that sounds cool kitty pick show lady mel to her peasants all right i shall find a kitty pick at least there's a pink beach the pink beach is pretty cool actually I really like the look of Ransom of the Seven Ships. I have no qualms with the design of the island, so that's good. Aw, my mom posted a really cute Mother's Day thing on Facebook. That's adorable. Okay, what picture should we go for? Well, that's a good one. <laughs> Zoomed in, Mel. Uh, there's Mel on a coat. Oh, where's the one where she was on my golf clubs? That one was funny. Oh my gosh, this one. Yes, this one. Okay, this is a good one. <laughs> Her eyes are so big. Oh, I love it. Okay. Okay. We're going to slide this over. And turn this off. And go to display capture. Okay. 
So there's Mel sitting on my golf clubs. <laughs> Just on top of the bag. <laughs> Look how big her pupils are. Really close to your future mother-in-law, so I was sure to celebrate her today as well. Absolutely. All moms deserve celebration. Being a mom is sounds like real hard work. Ooh, going to go longboarding. That's so cool, Maria. The atmosphere of Ransom is cool. I totally agree. The look and puzzles in Ransom are pretty good, but the story and characters are terrible. Mm-hmm, exactly. And as somebody who really prioritizes story and characters, it was like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Aw, it's so cute. <laughs> Mel wants to go golfing. I do golf, yeah. She's doing a Lion King Pride Rock, exactly. But not mini golfing a la Secret of the Old Clock. Oh, no. Gotta go. Bye, Chloe. That's totally okay. Thanks so much for joining the stream. Have a great rest of your day. You're taking me golfing with you, right? When did you get Mel? I got her when she was four months old. I said I mentioned earlier in the stream that we adopted her from a pumpkin patch. She was abandoned in a pumpkin patch with one other kitten and... um. We adopted her then when she was four months old, and now she's six. The list of the deceased, only to find out no one we knew was hit. Oh, my goodness. Wow, Amanda. Checking your bag before you go golfing next time. <laughs> You'll be like that story where a couple accidentally packed their cat to the airport. Yep. She would definitely try. She would definitely try. <laughs> All right, everyone. I am going to leave this stream right here. Thank you so much for joining me today for Haunting of Castle Malloy. I really enjoy that game, and it was so much fun to play it with all of you. Such a great time. Please feel free to like the stream. Um, if you're not subscribed already, please feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell. It makes it easier for when you are wondering if I'm going live next. Uh, feel free to like our Instagram, WizardKittenYT, for some uh, more fun content and uh, information about when I'm going live next. And in the summer, I'll be using the Instagram a lot, too, for, like, video ideas. But, yeah. Her little paws. I love kitty paws. Had a cat since you were three, and now you're in your 20s. She's kind of like a sibling. That's so sweet, Luna. I love that. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your Sunday. You are all such amazing fellow detectives. Bye. You're all the best. Bye.